bro. Oh. Yeah. Is it grey with a, a, a blue tenth planet sign on it? That's exactly right. <laughs> I've got the same jumper as you on. It's pretty awkward. <laughs> How weird is that? <laughs> it's a full moon, Suman. <laughs> well, well, I got a, a, a birthday suit ten planet on. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that is. <laughs> Birthday suit, dude. It's just you and your pubes, bro. Come on. <laughs> it's a full moon. All right, guys. All right, all right, all right. We are back uh, live. Uh, you guys uh, heard a little bit of the conversation there. Uh, tonight, we have a special guest, uh, Ian NT, all the way from England. Ian. Hi, bro. How's it going? All right, uh, we kind of hurt you a little bit, Ian, but Suman, you know what to do. Just get him a little bit closer to the mic. Okay. To hey. hey, bro, how's it going? All right, great. Awesome. We can hear you clearly now. All right, but we need to give a proper in introduction to the special guest on the show. And the only proper introduction that is possible is a Frank Barker breakdown. So... <laughs> uh, <laughs> in Newcastle, England. Uh, what are we doing? You want me to start? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, right now, right now, what's happening is uh, all right. I'm showing the YouTube video on my screen right now of uh, Ian's uh, hill hook finish on Cage Warriors 42. So, yeah. Ian, before we start off with your proper introduction, this is Monday Night's Mayhem way of introducing you to the show. Frank, you saw the hill hook. Tell me what happened. Well, hang on. Is there a guy on the show tonight called Ian? Yes. Is he the guy that hit the hill hook? Yes. Dude, Ian, fuck, dude, that was sick. I loved it. Mate, the way you went in, oh, dude, the way you balked, to, you dropped your level, went left, he, he, he committed to some hands, and you got that, I think you got that overhook with your with your right arm, and you kind of spun and, and controlled his leg all the way to that overhook with that left with, with that left leg of yours where you leg laced him, and you went straight to the heel hook. Man, that was slick. I fucking loved it, dude. I must have watched it 78 times, bro. It was sick. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, Ian, um, before you start introducing yourself, uh, tell me about your fighting style. That was the first time I've ever watched you. It was like a few months back, I believe. Uh, you were so hell-bent on taking his knee. Is, is that the way you, you train and fight every day in the gym? Well, we, I'd studied Liam quite a lot. Um, he's from SPG, which is the same gym as Conor McGregor. Um, and I know that they jump into the punches. Um, so I kept circling to my left, and we we drilled it quite a lot for Liam, and I, I knew he was going to jump in until he's right. As soon as he did that, I, I slipped and did something I call an X grip, um, and dro dropped down. Liam sprawled, and I I elevated the shins and just switched them. It's, it's just something that I, I work on. Yeah, wow. slick. Well, man. Okay, um, Frank, uh, ten planet style. You guys do the same thing. Oh uh, no, we actually can set up a twister from that same entry that he goes in and we just do yeah, that right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so the entry, I'm very familiar with the entry and Ian, I'm, I appreciate you um, understanding what I'm talking about too. It's beautiful, man. So yeah, we've got a similar entry into the twister. Uh, but look, you know, I mean, from that entry, whatever's available, if you just look around long enough, you'll find some other options. So it's, it's an awesome, obviously it works. I mean, it worked for you, Ian, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. Now, Ian, now is the time for the proper introduction. For those who don't know who Ian and Whistle is, I'm going to show um, his Sherdog page. Ian, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, what would you like um, okay, eight, eight and one. Um, you are like the shortest, shortest time in the cage, in Cage Warriors? Uh, in the world. I think I've got the fastest average winning time with eight fights or more in the world. Wow. <laughs> It's crazy, yeah. man. And forty-eight seconds or something like that. <laughs> wow. Um. Is okay. I is that is that the way you are planning to go into your uh future fights? Um. You just gonna finish them off in less than forty seconds? To be honest, I don't. I don't go into any fight like that. I just. I just go into the fight thinking it's gonna last however long it lasts. But I'm always looking to finish if I get a chance. <laughs> In my, I'll finish a fight. Wow, that's awesome, man. Um, does anybody say, does anybody ever tell you that you sound a bit like Michael Bisping? Yeah, we're from about five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> 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 All right, just yeah. joking, man. Um, 
I heard I heard you are with Australian top team now. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm just over here at the moment. Um, doing do obviously they're affiliated with PTT. Um, I'm just just back and forth really. Uh, that's awesome, man. Um, but the thing is, after that that viral video of your heel hook, I'm surprised. Uh, the top organizations haven't picked you up yet. Uh, and you have you had any offers yet? Yeah. Um, I've pretty much had offers on every big organization that's showed interest in me. Um, I can't say too much, but I've been offered an amazing contract this week. Uh, and in my opinion, it's the best organization in the world, and it, it's been a dream that I can fight for them. Um, it'll get announced who I'm fighting, where I'm fighting, and what organization I'm fighting with this week. So, so we got, we'll get the news this week. Yeah, hopefully I'll have my contract tomorrow, I'll sign that, and then it's up to them whenever they announce it. But I should, I'll be fighting within the next eight weeks. Next eight weeks? Hold on, Um, let me check. June, July. I can't, I can't, that's all I can say on that, because I don't know. Uh, okay, uh, okay, I'm gonna, gonna give a guess. Um, We'll be seeing you on July 14 in Jakarta 1FC. Definitely not, but that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I, I think I'm, I'll be seeing you in um, Rebel. Oh, then let's not even play this game. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's not game to play. We're not playing. Let's get Ian in trouble on the radio. All right, all right, all right. Okay, I'll stop that. Um, Suman. Um, having Ian on. How long have you had Ian on uh, ATT? Oh, he, he's been here for about a week. He came back with um, my brother and uh, James and Jim when they were training at PTT. Uh, it was a, a bit of a spontaneous thing, you know. Um, Ian just wanted to kind of come down and, and, and just try something else out. Uh, he'll be going back to PTT soon as well, but it's good. So hopefully we can get Ian down here, train with our guys, teach us something. And um, it's good to have different guys in the gym training together, you know. And Ian's a good friend. Uh, he's been friends with my brother for a long time. So it's good to see, uh, like, a family face come around. So have, have he tried ripping your knee apart? Not yet, not yet. Nah, uh, Ian is, uh, you know what, it's funny that you, you see that uh, from his fights. If you, if you see his fights, he seems like a very ag aggressive fighter or something, but he's actually a lot, uh, as you can see from his last fight, he's a lot smarter than, than you think. He, everyone would think he just kind of goes balls to the wall, but um, he, he's, he's more of a fighter than what he's shown in, in, his, uh, in his highlight reels, you know what I mean? He uh, he's got better stand up than, than what I had, what I had thought before I had trained with him, and um he's a hard worker, he's a hard trainer, and you know so um yeah he's not really everything I, I expected. He's actually more, so um it's good for us. It, it shows us a bit, a bit about our cardio and work ethic. All right, man. Um, that's awesome, man. Okay, all right. Um, we are going to move on to our UFC Fight Night 40 segment. Um. Yeah. Ian, you want to stay on and, and give your thoughts about the fights that's happened in this last weekend? Of course, yeah. All right, man. Awesome. Um, Frank, I understand that you only watch the main event? No, nah, man. I, I've got all the prelims down too. Wow. But, okay. But tonight, there's only three fights I want to talk about. First okay. off, Darren Cruikshank. Frank. Wow. Yes. <laughs> let, me, let me just get organized on this. Well, look. What a, I mean, his his four shot combination that he used to start that start the beginning and end of the fight was was huge. Uh, he came out with that uh, right high roundhouse kick, two punches down the pipe, and then come up with a switch high left. That really um, took um, Eric Kosh out of out of his uh, position and landed two head shots. I mean, they weren't like they weren't like shin kicks to the head per se. Um, they just kind of rocked him, but it was just enough. Uh, just to put him down and, and to end that fight, that was so impressive, man. It was it was a beautiful combination starting out with that high right roundhouse kick and following up all the way through to the end. So I was very impressed with this guy. Always exciting to watch. You know, he's he's had like I think two head kick knockouts already, an impressive highlight reel so far in his early career. Yeah, um, I I was hooked after watching him uh, fight Mike Rio. Suman, um, your thoughts on that? It was a good fight, you know, I, I, watching Eric co come out to the fight, I thought, man, he's looking tough, he's looking determined, and, um, you know, you can't really count out the Duke Rufus guys, you know, they said it in the commentary, you know, they got um, 
a guy like Showtime Pettis from that camp as well. So he's obviously seen some amazing kicks. But I think Darren Cruikshank's level of taekwondo or karate that, that he's got is something that uh, is real hard to deal with. He's, he's a real awkward striker. You know, he's not the conventional striker that anyone would go up against. So uh, I think if someone's blasting you and you want to play that game for long enough, you could get caught. And, uh, and that's what happened, you know. Uh, Eric got caught. It was a well-placed, well-timed kick. Um, and, you know, it's some good ground and pound. Um, the, the shots on the ground weren't effective, but then at the same time, he weren't. Uh, Eric wasn't defending himself intelligently enough, so I think it was a good stoppage. Um, Ian, how about you? Does that uh, co- is that combo common? Right, high kick, uh, left, right hand, then left high kick. Common. Not, 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 partic- not particularly to me. I've only thrown about eight punches in all my fights. <laughs> I was watching that fight, and to be honest, I thought, fuck, I'd eat the shit out of both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, man, Ian, let's move on to um, uh, Filippo and Larkin. Uh, coming into the fight, I didn't expect something like that to happen. How about you, Ian? Do you expect that to happen? I'm going to be honest, I didn't watch that fight. I watched the <laughs> shit. And by the time I come back, it'll finish. <laughs> 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 Alright, then I'll have to move to Zoom Don't yeah, tell me, um, don't tell me you take a shit as well. Me? Uh, it even wipes my ass. <laughs> 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 we we're, we we're in the toilet together. We've actually, been sharing, we've actually been sharing the bowl. I've been on the toilet seat for about the past two, three days. And I, I, I just I left my house for the first time to be on the show. Yeah, we got food poisoning. Yeah, Ian got food poisoning the other night, and then I kind of got it the next day. Fucking hell. Wait, are you guys living together? Yeah. yeah. yeah, no, yeah. no wonder. Your, your girlfriend must be pissed. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what the food was from, but uh, it's been a funny few days. Ian's gotten sick, then I got sick. I think my brother's getting sick soon. The best thing is, I don't need to have to worry about cutting weight for my fight anymore. <laughs> there, there, there's something for you, a bit of information for you. <laughs> cool. um, with that, with that Costa fight, uh, Costa and Larkin, man, I was gonna always give the the power advantage to Costa. Um, and when he hits you, he hurts you, and that's the easiest way to say it. He was a former pro boxer, and it was boxing versus kickboxing. You know, two slick different styles fighting each other. Um, Larkin is an amazing striker, but uh, I think you said it last week, if um, if uh, Costa can get past the kicks and maybe counter one of those kicks with a big punch and put the pressure on Larkin, he was going to get the win. And Man, if, I think if Costa hits anyone like he did Larkin, they're going down. So, yeah. yeah how about you, Frank? Your thoughts on that? Well, to me, Philip, who looked so impressive early, I mean, his heavy hands going high and low on Larkin, he kept the pressure on Larkin from the get-go, like, both boys, super tough, swinging for the fences, very impressive from both in the pocket, Philip, who never worried, he never really worried about getting taken down at all, which gave him the freedom to let those hands go, so he was never, you know, Larkin wasn't ever looking to shoot, so that gave him the opportunity to really dig in deep. Um, to really get set and, and get off. And, and that's what he did, man. And Costas Philip, who looked amazing. And when he put uh, Larkin's lights out, man, you know, I've got to say, Larkin's tough, dude. I mean, he hit him with, he nailed him with a lot of heavy shots. So, um, you know, it was a great fight. It was a great showing for Philip, who hopefully this is a, the beginning of the next chapter of his career. So, man, but, you know, you got to love that left hook, right cross combination. I mean, that, that's, that's money. That's money for him. So, um, great outcome for Philip. All right, that's awesome, man. And, Going to the main event, I feel the main event, Eric Silva versus Matt Brown, first round, best round I've seen ever in my life. I'm going to repeat the highlights over and over again. And I know, Frank, you can talk about this the whole night long. So let's start it off with you. Man, you want to just talk about the first round? You want me to talk about the whole fight? You talk about anything you want, man. I just love uh, listening to your analysis. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's cool. Now, look, I've got to say, uh, Matt Brown, I mean, shit. 
you know, I don't know. I don't know whether people take him lightly. I don't know what it is, but um, Eric Silva didn't take him lightly at all. Uh, Matt Brown came out, man, and he, from the minute they started, he stepped forward. I don't know whether, if you go back and watch that fight, man, he came forward from the get-go. And Eric Silva, man, he ate some huge punches. He ate, that first round was epic. And when he hurt, you know what, he took, I think, uh, yeah, he took uh, Matt Brown's back, like, within the first couple of minutes of the fight. He really did. And Matt Brown's composure there, that, mate, if you want to finish somebody, you got to hurt him, take the back, and then try and seal it out. Mate, he hurt, he hurt Matt Brown in that first round and took his back. That's what he did. He did exactly the perfect thing that you should do. Now, trying to sink in a rear naked choke without hurting your opponent first is almost like a waste of energy because they have so much energy uh, that they can um, control the arms, the hand fight. It's, it's, it's exhausting. So um, hurting your opponent then jumping on their back and trying to finish is the way to do it. We see some of the some really top guys doing that. Diego Sanchez comes to mind too, BJ Penn as well. But um, not to digress. Um, that first round was epic. Obviously, Matt Brown got hurt three times to the body in that fight. Eric Silva's left body kick was just fucking hell, man. I mean, it was cracking. Every time he kicked Brown, it was literally like a whip was cracking, man. It was fucking impressive to watch. And how fit for how fit were they both? They were incredible shape in this fight, dude. And i got to say, Eric Silva, man, that boy can take... He's going to have a fucking headache for a while. Apparently, they... <laughs> Apparently they're gonna they're gonna uh, he got stretched out of the out of the octagon. I'm not too sure exactly if that's true or not. I didn't really see that, but I heard he got stretched out. Man, he would have probably spent the night in hospital for sure after that. But how about those elbows from Matt Brown? Jesus Christ, that was incredible. My God, he made him pay. He made him pay pay so much, and he just kept that that incredible pressure that takes it just burns your lungs. You just can't get a breath. You can't get off. You can't. Man, did you see after? Um, Silva uh, couldn't fish, seal the deal with the rear naked choke. He was really tired. You could see how much that uh, he, that he was trying to finish the fight took out on his system. And and you've got to say, Matt Brown looked really in some trouble early in the first round. And how he got out of that was just incredible. I know I'm jumping a little bit, but there's so many epic fucking moments in this fight. It was like an entire fight card of highlights. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's true, man. Um, like Talking about the neck crank, do you think that it was a mistake for Silva to try that neck crank? No, it's just an Um, who, who's gonna start it? Frank, you wanna start it first about the neck crank? Which, listen, I'm not sure, I'm not sure which part you mean, seriously. I, I'm, fuck, I, know, I don't remember. Which part? First round, uh, Silva got his back, start, uh, start, start trying to, you oh, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what, what do you wanna know about it? What do you wanna uh, know about? Do you think it was a mistake for him to, to, uh, uh, finish his energy on that neck crank. Look, we, 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 we're not afraid to transition. Look, I mean, in an MMA fight, when you get that position, it's a pretty safe position, man. It's pretty good. I mean, you're pretty happy. It's the first round. You manage to get on the back like that, dude. You, don't, you, you know, you really want to hold him there as long as you can. You want to try and finish the fight. It's a great opportunity to finish. You know, so, you know, he was just trying to exhaust all his options. Maybe he thought he was wearing him down. I mean, maybe he thought Matt Brown was breaking. I mean, who knows? I mean, Eric Silva's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. He knows what's going on. He knows the deal. He's probably been there a thousand, you know, five million times. So, I mean, in his mind, I mean, who, I don't know. But in his mind, maybe he thought that maybe he could use that to maybe get back underneath the chin. Because if you recall, after that neck crank didn't go off, Matt Brown had really good control of a two-on-one on wrist control on Eric's one of his arms. And I think that was the beginning of how he started getting out. So, look, I mean, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I'm not one to judge in that position, but what I would have done different. But I know for a fact that you're going you're gonna to exhaust every option um, and try and finish. I mean, I don't know. It was a five-round fight as well. I mean, maybe he wanted to just get out of there. And how many first-round finishes does Eric Silva have anyway? He has stacks of them. Yep. Yeah. You know? So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, you know, a, a far reach to think that he was just going to go. You know what? I'm going to try and put this kid away in the first round. I hurt him. I took his back. I'm going for the finish. They're not thinking about the third round or halfway through the fourth, right? They're thinking about finishing that fight fucking right there and get their check. All right, I, I agree with you, man. Um, I just want to uh, boast a little bit. I remember me and Suman were discussing about this fight last week, and I said um, Brown is just going to knock Eric Silva out, and I was right. Uh, Suman, did that kind of hurt your heart a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> well, it did, I'm an Eric Silva fan, but like watching that fight, one thing I realized is um, one thing that Matt Brown said before, uh, just recently in, in an interview was, he, watching Robbie Lawler versus uh, Johnny Hendricks was like watching two guys play patty cake. <laughs> yeah. 
because yeah. they had no punching power. I think that uh, if uh, if he needs to like take a bit of his own advice, he should start to do that because he looked like he was lacking some punching power, man, because he was hitting hard. I honestly reckon that at, at, as a bantamweight fighter, Ian could have hit harder and knocked Derek Silva out with that many punches. And, and Matt Brown, Brown, Brown's a beast, bro. Yeah, but Brown, <laughs> Brown's a beast. He's relentless. But that I think on that night he he must have had a broken rib or something because he just couldn't put much. Uh, like he could put them together, but he seemed like he didn't have that power that he's had in his last few fights together. Yeah. Um, he must have been really hurt from that body kick. And, um, man, if you notice the way he throws that body kick, it's a bit different to how everyone else throws it. He, uh, Silver doesn't throw that body kick uh, much like everyone else. He kind of turns his toes in and, and tries to jab your, your rib cage with it, you know? So, um, yeah, it was pretty interesting to see uh, that fight. I, I love that fight all over. It, it was heartbreaking as it was because I'm an Eric Silver fan. At the same time, it was really disappointing to uh, to see something like that because, like, I, I expect more from from a guy who's in the main event of of a UFC event. I know anyone else who who would go into the UFC is going to be in there putting the best uh, performance in, as far as cardio, as far as working on their overall game. Now, Eric Silva, as much as he uh, He's, got, he's a great striker and he's a great BJJ practitioner. Uh, he forgot one essential part that uh, most mixed martial artists and a lot of guys from PTT and ATT work on highly, which is their cardio. You know, um, it, working as someone like Australian top team here, one thing we try and focus on now is something we may have forgotten about earlier days now that we focus on is having our guys in the best shape to go three rounds or five rounds. I didn't even know there were more than one round. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Ian, I don't know if you've seen um, Donald yeah, Cerrone. Yeah, I, I off the toilet for that one. No, 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 not about the fight. Um, uh, oh, so, oh, is, <laughs> yeah, it's, okay, something about the fight. Um, Donald Cerrone <laughs> actually tweeted something saying that, you know, uh, what kind of uh, UFC main eventer is this uh, with a guest tank of only three minutes? Um, do you agree with what Donald Cerrone says? No, I, I thought the fight was amazing. But if I'm honest, to say how high level technically they are, it was like they both just thought, fuck it, let's just knock the shit out of each other. <laughs> if I'm honest, there was some. if you watch it, no one can deny there was some technical mistakes in there. But oh my God, what a fight. It was like... They both knew how to fight, and there was more technical things he could have used, but they just knocked the shit out of each other, and it was sure. fantastic to watch. Yeah. yeah, man, I totally agree with you, but talking about technicalities, Frank, um, second round, Eric Silva was put in an umba, and he was dying, and he got out of it. That's some crazy shit, man. Yeah, he also got out of a triangle, too. I don't yep. know if you never... I mean, I, I look, I... I... I have to agree with Ian. I think something was up with, um, oh, sorry, Ian or Suman. I'm not sure which one of you mentioned the rib injury. Maybe it was you, Suman. But um, yeah, I, I have to think that uh, they may have been a bit tired, like Matt Brown not being able to squeeze that triangle out. Like I, I thought he had it all locked and I thought he had everything down. Yeah, ready he to... didn't look like he wanted to grab the leg. Yeah, yeah, like he, he didn't want to. I don't know whether he was tired or what. I'm not sure. But um, it was really surprising to me that he couldn't close it out because Matt Brown's a beast on the ground. I mean, I've seen him. He's got some great submissions on the ground. So it was a bit confusing why the, he didn't close the deal. But, you know, I don't know. Who's to say? Who's to know? Look, who's to know? It was an awesome yeah. event. It was an awesome Amazing. performance. Amazing. Uh, yeah. I've got a bit of respect for both those guys, man. I mean, seriously. I mean, Eric, I mean, I know everyone can speculate, oh, he's gas tank. This, no, I understand that. I really do. I get it. I really do. But at the end of the day, I'm with you, Ian, on this. Uh, and that is that... I thought it was an epic fight. I thought it showed the spirit of what the UFC is intended in the first place. Um, Matt Brown, the kind of guy he is, is a family man. Like, he's a, he's a cool dude. Like, he's, you know, just another... He seems like a regular guy that's just got a heart like a lion, you know? It's just awesome. And Eric as well. What a chin. I mean, that guy... Look, what, look at the elbows he took, man. He fucking took a beating. He took a beating. He's tough as nails, man. Yeah, could his cardio be better? Yeah, fucking all our cardios could be better. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think anyone can deny Eric Silver's heart for even saying it because I thought at the end of that first round it was over. 
took another round, and then even in the third, you know, and, and he never really stopped. Um, and I, I think that he could have maybe taken that beating for five rounds, you know. But have we seen have we seen a better in shape silver than that? I mean, oh, maybe that's just his style. Maybe that he just looks a little bit lackadaisy. I mean, how many times you trained? I think, I think, I think you know what? Just... As much as, as much as I said, like his cardio should have been thing. I think it's probably his fighting style. I don't think you can throw at the pace that he throws and fight at the pace that he fights and not get gassed out. I think it would be unhuman like, uh, or like. Um, all right, let, let's look at a fight, a fight like Michael Bisping, for instance. Yeah. Michael Bisping is known to have amazing, great cardio, and he's incredibly strong as well. Um, but he doesn't throw with the power that uh, someone, even like Eric Silva or Hector Lombard, throws at. It's a different right. fight style. You know, right. though, I, I, I used to, um, I, when I was outside the gym, I could hear Mick Bisping hit pads when I was back in England. You know, I used to know Bisping was in the gym. He used to hit pads at Predators where I was. And we used to know Bisping was in the gym by him hitting pads outside. We could hear the thuds. Bisping is one of the most powerful fighters at striking. I've seen. Banging over. Yeah. Bang. <laughs> All right, man. Um, after all this, um, talk about uh Brown versus Hendricks. You want to see that fight, Suman? Like right Which, now? Uh, who? Uh, Brown versus Hendricks now? Uh, nah, 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 not right now, man. I'd, honestly, I'd rather see uh Lombard oh. versus Brown first. Um, I think that would be a good fight, and I think that one could be a number one contender spot. I I still would rather kind of maybe see. Uh, Robbie Lawler get back in. I know he's not getting back in there now, but I was pretty content on seeing Hendricks rematch uh, with uh, Lawler first. Hmm. Um. All right. Um. I still want to see Nick Diaz versus Lombard. Ian, what what do you think? Who who should Matt Brown face next? I think Matt Brown at some point surely has to have a title shot. Now. Well. For me, I think he's the second most underrated fighter in the world. Wow, that's 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 pretty interesting, man. How about how could they put Matt Brown as a, as a two to one underdog? The book is. Yeah, that was stupid, man. I'd have put some money. On, some money on. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that. That was stupid. Um. I think maybe it's because there was not much Matt Brown on the UFC card and Eric Silva was like winning his last fight with some uh, soccer style head kicks Well, he was jumping up and down like a pogo stick. Anyways, Frank, um, who do you want to see Matt Brown face next? I don't care. I'll watch Matt Brown fight. <laughs> I don't give a shit, mate. I'll, I'll watch him fight fucking my mate down the street. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Matt Brown fight. I don't give a fuck who the fuck. <laughs> Now, I do, for me, well, this is what I feel. Uh, Brown is on a seven-fight winning streak, and uh, there's another guy on the welterweight division, uh, Stun Gun, who's on a four-fight winning streak, and everybody knows uh, what happened in the last fight with Stun Gun and John Hathaway. He was just a fucking beast. Just put these two beasts together. I think it will be something like um, Silva okay. versus uh, how many, Brown. How many fighters do you think have had a seven-fight winning streak and not had a UFC title shot? Um... George um, Soropoulos was one of them. Yeah, George, I, was, I was about to say George Soropoulos. One, yeah. two, I think he's due one. Yeah, you probably right, bro. Mm. It, I mean, it, he was calling GSP out and he, he, he never got his chance there. And I think maybe, <laughs> maybe he should. Well, I can, think, you Carlos, can, can you imagine Carlos Condit, Matt Brown? Yeah, Carlos Condit, Matt Brown would work. But, because the thing is... um. The the fighters that Matt Brown uh, defeated are not considered as top contenders. That's why we as fans still think that you know. Uh, did he know. not? Did he not beat Mike Swick though? Yeah, he beat Matt Swick. He beat Mike Pyle. I don't care. Mike Pyle is the best fighter in the UFC. <laughs> Mike Pyle's the man. He's got the best mullet in the UFC. That's what I go off. <laughs> you can't beat that mullet. We're trying to be serious, too, man. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> oh, you guys. Uh, anyways, I still want to hey, see... Hey, anyone who tries to say Mike Paul isn't legit. <laughs> Mike Paul's the man. Oh, come on. Yeah, but fucking hell, man. Seriously. 
Juan Paul will, will soon be the UFC champ. Uh, nah, for me, any guy who fights in the UFC, except for Pat Cummins, is legit. <laughs> Pat Cummins kind of did what he had to do, talked a lot of shit, got fed for it. But um, hey, he got a contract out of it, didn't he? Yep. Hey, and and you know what? No matter what anyone says about Pat Cummins, he's doing something that a lot of us would dream to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, so uh, I'm sure he's working his ass off now, and and he's gonna talk less and show more action. <laughs> All right, guys. Um. Uh. Enough of UFC Fight Night 40. Uh, since we start off with Ian, we're gonna end a bit more on Ian. Ian. Um. What is your agenda in the Australian top team? How long are you gonna stay there? And what else can we expect from you other than the rumor of this one week uh date announcement of your next fight? Uh, four fight contract with the organization I'm with, so I'll, it'll be. Whatever they give me, I don't care who I fight or where I fight, I'm, I'm pretty confident whoever I fight, I'll win. I honestly believe I'm the best in the world and you only speak to people I train with, anyone, and they'll tell you I'm special. I can do things people have never seen. Yeah, I, I believe you and I'm, I can't wait to see you and I hope you are fighting in Singapore or at least somewhere near where I can watch. <laughs> Live. <laughs> Dude, like, no matter what, no matter where you watch him, you're gonna see something special. You know? No, dude, uh, dude, it's different, man. It's different if I'm like I got media passes and shit, and if I'm cage side and I see Ian like fucking roll for that heel heel hook from hell, I'll be fucking jumping and marking out like the way you did when one of your guys did a suplex in your gym. Bro, <laughs> if I get that in my, if I get one of them in my next fight with how big it is and the stage that it's at. You won't get me off the cage for a month. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'll tell you, but he, he, he's, he's got more than that. He, he's got a few other tricks up his sleeve for his next fight. Oh man, I, I, I can't wait, man. Hey Ian, it's Frank here. Hey listen bro, listen, anytime you're in Melbourne, anytime you want to come hang out, dude, we love our leg locks, foot locks. Man, we've got open minds, 10th Planet Melbourne, baby. If you want to come down, we'd love to have you there as our guest bro anytime, alright? Thank you very much. All right. Um, how about you, Suman? I believe uh, ATT had some fights this week. Yeah, uh, we had two fighters fight this week. Um, we had Alexis Sloth, Georgie's fight, uh, a short notice fight in kickboxing, and uh, we had uh, Trent Gurdon fight for the Australian title in the main event at New Generation Nine on the weekend. Uh, Alex went down with a split decision. Uh, I believe he won the fight, but um, I think maybe. His attitude towards the end of the fight lost it, lost it for him. Um, and he, he got a bit of a, a spray from me after, you know. Uh, like I, I'm, I'm as honest as they get, and and I think the thing that lost his fight for him was after he won the fight, he expected more from himself. So after the fight had ended, instead of raising his hand like he won, he kind of shook his head from side to side and was disappointed with himself. And and that's the last thing that he left in the judges. Judges mind, so um, I think I think he's got no one to blame for himself, and he lost that fight for himself there. But uh, yeah, it, it, that was a disappointing end to that fight. But then Trent kind of brought it back. He had a five-round war, a good technical fight with with another uh, guy at 58 kilos, and kind of out punched and out kicked him. You know, um, was way more effective. It was possibly the worst split decision I've ever heard of. It was a split decision win, but um, yeah, I was trying to find the judge who give it to the other person. Yeah, we are. Uh, as soon as they said split decision, I kind of looked at Trent and then I looked at Ian, and Ian came by the ring and he looked like he was about to jump in and bash someone. <laughs> uh, I just like things that are fair, and that that kid's a talent. Honestly, he's a, he's a real talent, and bash the kid for five rounds. All you could hear is their corner shouting, hey, hey, every time he blocked a punch. I thought, it's a bit dodgy, this. And then, <laughs> I, as I caught, I clicked to the ring, I thought, hmm. And then, it was a split decision. I thought, show me how they could possibly give that split decision. I wanted to find the judge, but... It was a very clear-cut decision. Oh, well, but... I think I think that's the first um, loss for ATT since don't know when 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 was that? Uh, 
Yeah, we haven't had lost in a few months, man. Yeah, man. And, and, and Trent's gonna come back. The Mr. Senchai kick, isn't it? No, it's uh, Trent won. Oh, Trent won. Trent won the fight. Yeah, yeah. It was just a terrible split decision that they uh... could have. One judge actually gave it to the other guy. Like, I don't know how or who watched that fight to think that the other guy could have won. You know, Trent demolished him. Maybe Trent won every round. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, I think I think there's there's a lot of work needed to be done. It's the same in uh, Singapore and Malaysia as well uh, about the judges' decisions in uh, in uh, MMA tournament or kickboxing tournament. The, the, the show is great. It's a great show. The promoter's a great guy. It is is very fair, very honest, and you don't get that with a lot of promoters. So um, it's pretty good. But the judging was absolutely well, horrendous. They, I think on the night, they had about maybe, they had 12 fights. I think eight of them were like split decisions. You know, um, like, I don't know how two, two people can have such a different view on a kickboxing fight when they're from the same organization. Uh, I, th I think I think maybe the guy on the, on the right-hand side near the blue corner was blind or something. Or, or one of the re referees was retarded because Trent had knocked him down at least twice in the fight. But they never gave the guy a count. You know, um, um, I know it's not just Australia, it's all around the world. So. Yeah. All right, Frank, how about you? What's coming up this week? What's What happened last week for you? Oh, man, we've had a, a standard busy week down at Temple and Melbourne, man. So it's all happening. Uh, um, you know, we've since the, the fallout of uh, Meta Morris, obviously, you know, the uh, we're, we're at the apex of um, people's minds as far as jiu-jitsu goes in, in Victoria. So we've had a huge infl influx of new people coming through and a lot of really excited about learning the system, which has been awesome as well. So um, and also in the past week, you know, I'm in talks with Rebel FC. So it's finalized that I'm going to be on that card calling awesome. it again. Awesome. Yeah. So we just uh, finalised that, so that that's a go, and we're just uh, hopefully, in the next couple of days, hopefully we'll see if we can get out there on uh, July 30, so we can have that seminar down there. Would be sick, you know. Yeah, I'm 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 just waiting for a few more details, and I think we can start promoting it very very soon. Um, uh, Justin, Chad, uh, Yongha, and all the Rebel FC guys who are listening to this, we <laughs> want a confirmation, and we would like it by this week. And I'm calling you guys out. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So hopefully we can get uh Frank seminar and Australian top team seminar as well. And hopefully, uh, Ian, you're still on and you'll come by Singapore as well to to have fun with us. Um. I think that's it for this first hour of the show. Uh, Frank, thank you very much, and Ian, thank you very much. Uh, being part of the show, and we would love to have you guys back again. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks again. See you, Suman. Ian, nice to meet you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I believe Ian is still with you, Suman. Yeah, but he's about to leave. My brother just came to get him now. All right. He's uh, he trained early in the morning, so he's just gonna pop out. Yeah, it's all right, man. Um, okay, we are gonna move on a little bit to the Manila scene. Uh, hopefully, Mr. Mike uh picks up his Skype because I. What were you gonna talk about the Manila scene for? Uh, oh. this uh, Pan Asian BJJ coming on, and uh, he attended the Van Askren Open Workouts, and there was some uh, pretty well, interesting. BJJ <laughs> and Ben Askren, they're the most two boring subjects. <laughs> yeah, he's out. Ian's out. You, you, you did... pick something better than yeah, that. You, you, you sold him. He's <laughs> out. <laughs> see ya. All right, see you, Ian. <laughs> yeah, it, okay, it's true, man. Um, like what what Ian say is is actually quite true. Um. Wait. Just one more thing, Ben Askren, 50 and 50, I wouldn't give him a fiver. He's the most boring guy in MMA. Awesome. And, and it gets better. They give him, they put him on 50 and 50, uh -huh. and they decide to give him easy opponents. If you're going to pay someone 50 and 50, it means they can beat up anyone you pick. If, so give him someone hard at least, rather than someone he's just going to beat up easily. I think you should ask in Ian who he would fight for 50 and 50. I'm, I'm going to go, I'll fight anyone for anything. <laughs> um, one more thing, I know that uh -huh. Askren has been offered Moyes Rimbon, and one FC turned that fight down, and I think that's purely because Moyes Rimbon would beat him up completely. Wow, Ian! I, star boy. Ian, Ian, I fucking love you. I want you on the show again. <laughs> <laughs> that, no problem. That's just yeah. awesome, man. 
It's just honest, isn't it? It's just the truth. That's what we need in the scene here. We ha- have a lack of people who are scared to talk about honest stuff. Yeah, nah. It, it, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, to the point and honest with everything that goes on. <laughs> Ian, he will speak his mind whether it's about 1FC, about UFC, about Rebel or whatever it is. He's pretty honest. So um, I'll have him back on the show next week ready for you guys. Hopefully he can talk more about uh, his contract that he... Uh, he's just been offered, and um, and he can talk about his opponent. He's he's been given an opponent already, um, so he can talk about everything, and we can talk about it first interview next week on Monday. Oh my God, that's awesome, man! That's fucking awesome. It'll be it'll be, it'll be big news for um for this show too. Uh, it'll, it'll be it'll be pretty groundbreaking stuff. All right, man. That's awesome. I I can't wait for next week. Um, but what Ian said about uh, BJJ is uh very true. Uh, there's a lot of guys who are in the combat scene, who does BJJ tournaments, who watch BJJ. Told me that it's hard for BJJ to to um to actually uh have a vested interest in because it's almost like watching paint dry. Yeah, so it it depends who you're watching, man. Like some people make the sport real boring and and things like that. But then you, then again, you got the guys that really come and put it on. You know, I think the reason um Ian thinks uh but Ian's got a bit of a, a bit of a different style. You know, uh, he he says BJJ is boring and and things like that. But I think it's just because uh he doesn't play for points or to Grind out decisions. I think that's why why he kind of says that. Uh, Ian's Ian's a, a from you can see from his fights. He's a finisher and he goes for the finish. And um and you you slip up, whether it's striking or on the ground, he he'll catch you. And uh, I think that's why he'll kind of call it boring, and he'll call someone like Ben Askren boring, because they're so content with getting a decision. When uh, what Ian's looking for is to get knocked out of the night or get a submission of the night he's looking to wow everyone and and he's in an entertaining sp- in in the sport of entertainment so uh, i think that he thinks whatever you're doing whether it's bjj or something like that you should go for the finish and be entertaining yeah man um like it's hard uh you i don't know if you saw uh the part where kevin casey was talking about scooting and uh oh yeah you- so that's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> uh then there was there was a video made by um s- some guy I forget his name is um Kid Dale. Ah uh, yes, Kid Dale and there was this street fight and he went scooting. Um is that does that translate to uh boring jiu jitsu? Uh, Kenan Cornelius to me is is boring jiu jitsu sometimes, you know. But I think the new rules that have been put in place um in the International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation are kind of stopping that to make the matches more exciting so we don't see a bit of a 50-50 ball fest of guys just holding each other in a 50-50 position. Um, I think if, if you pull a 50-50 guard now, you've got like 20 seconds to advance your position or go for a submission, which is, which is kind of uh, a lot better. But um, no, I, I think... Competition jiu-jitsu is very different to street jiu-jitsu or MMA jiu-jitsu. It's it's something completely different. Uh, I think at times competition jiu-jitsu can be very boring. Uh, but yeah, you know, I I see them as two completely different sports. I see BJJ as a sport for itself, and sometimes I'm real intrigued by it, and then. Uh, I watched some MMA fights and I'll say this is the most boring shit I've ever watched in my <laughs> life. You can't say every MMA fight is exciting, you know. So um, it, it depends on who's in there, who's who's given the effort, you know. You watch a guy like myself or like Ian, for example, we don't like to be boring. Uh, you watch any PTT guy, they don't like to be boring. You watch any ATT guy, they don't like... We don't like to breed boring fighters you know uh i think some some camps will uh yeah i, th- I think some camps will i'm not gonna really i don't none really come to mind i'm not really gonna slay any but some camps do come to mind as boring but you know we're different 
All right, man. Um, it seems I I'm having a problem with Mike, so I'm gonna put Mike next. Um, I'm gonna try and get Ellen on first. Uh, to talk about ultimate beatdown. Um, just to digress a bit. Uh, uh, fight scene just published fighting words. This is our first. Uh, style a new format whereby the same questions will be posed to two fighters and we'll see how both fighters respond to each other. It's hilarious, it's crazy, it's hitting things up between uh, the rematch of Brad Robinson versus Nick Harris. So uh, check it out and the next one will be uh, Casey Schweier versus uh, Stephen Langdown. Um, what else do we got here? All right. Ellen, are you on? Hello? Yeah. Helen? Yeah, I'm not speaking to you. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Hi, brother. <laughs> oh, is that Alex? So I, I was just turning down the computer and turning up the telephone. All right. Um, so I was listening to the show because I'm, I'm a fan, you know. <laughs> <coughs> well, thank, thanks, hey, man. Hey, Mike. Okay, Mike, you got to hey. hold on because Ellen is on first. You, we tried to oh. get you on. Yeah, so you got to yeah, hold yeah, on. I know. And bro, you got no, no, no. Bro, deal with Mike. I'm here anyway. Just call me back when you're ready. No, no, no. Since everyone's no, no, here. It's okay, okay. It's okay. You like that? Yeah, it's okay, okay because Mike is a fan of the show as well and he's from the Philippines. He's... Well, what does that got to do with it? Bless him. Um, so he can listen to us live because when you listen to the YouTube, it's, it's like 10 seconds delay, isn't it? Oh, no. no. Uh, okay, whatever. <laughs> Alan, ultimate beat down. Let's go. Okay, well, the news is um, almost official. Uh -huh. This is as official as it's going to get. We are everything except a signed contract from official. Um, based upon the fact that the meeting we had today was just two of us against about ten, I think the people are taking it serious. So here's the deal, kids. It's going to be June the 14th, which is also the same date as uh, 1FC in Jakarta, I believe, at... Edu City in um, Johor Bahru. Now, Edu City is a brand new sports stadium which incorporates a football stadium, a swimming stadium, and a badminton stadium. So it's a world-class stadium. We will be holding our first ever event in a stadium, having mainly done our stuff, our work in bars and shopping malls. Um, there's a 1,500 capacity. And if we get anywhere near that, I'll be a very happy monkey. Dude, I, I, I cannot believe that you didn't say it in an exciting tone. Fucking hell, dude. Ultimate Beatdown started... Ultimate Beatdown 1 started in a gym. Ultimate Beatdown 14 is now in a fucking stadium. Yeah. Well, uh, the reason I'm not excited is I have done so many meetings for this. You would not believe. <laughs> and also, we've, we've, we've been... People have been asking, and to be fair... To the people, the dates have been put back and put back. And if I was sort of thinking about fighting on a beat down, I would be pretty pissed off because we have really struggled to get this venue sorted out. Um, we had other options, but the opportunity to actually do it in a proper stadium um, with the great thing about mixing, and this is uh, Edge of City is part of Iskandar, which is a huge um, sort of ongoing uh, development in Johor. In Malaysia so um, we're gonna have a lot of support from the people behind that organization um, they're trying to get TV involved which would be effing amazing is all I can say um, if they get any sort of form of TV and if it's only sort of local TV I'd be very happy because realistically our audience comes from Singapore and Johor you know that's the reality um, we I don't know we're, we're trying to we've got we need we need sponsors and we need fighters. We've got a few fighters lined up, and I'll give you some of the, the bouts that we've got at the moment. All right. Which are confirmed. The problem we've got, obviously, and this is, uh, as I'm sure the other guys there would know, having an event and then confirming what the event's all about are two different things, and we have been messed around so much that um, fighters obviously uh, have sort of said, ah, F it, we're done, we haven't got time. Um, however, one uh, one event, one bout which I can definitely um, confirm is uh, we're going to have Gary Tang from Impact in Singapore fighting Nicholas Lee. Fuck! Ex Impact Singapore. Singapore. Oh uh, fuck! Big big bad blood between those two, dude. 
Oh fuck, Suman, if you don't know anything about this, okay, um, Nick is fucking legit. Is he? He's a fucking legit fighter, and he was from Impact MMA, and he got banned from Impact Why MMA. Why did he get banned? Yep, he got banned from Impact MMA, and he oh, was. What? I I I don't know why, and this is what I'm gonna try to pull out. Um, since the fight is happening, and I know that he pretty much hates Impact for his all his life. After that, um, then Nick uh flew flew off to Thailand, uh, trained with Tiger Muay Thai for a while. I think it was a few months, four five months in Tiger Muay Thai. Then he went somewhere, and I know he's now back in Singapore. So, um, this is if you're talking about bad blood. Singapore fight. This is it. Like, you is, is this more bad blood with Gary Tang and Nicholas, or is this bad blood just because he left Impact? You know, does Gary really want to be the one to pay him back? I'm not too sure about Gary wants to pay him back, but I'm I pretty we sure. Need to start an interview with uh, Gary to see what he thinks about this and set up maybe uh, Nicholas Lee and Gary Tang to both be on the show next week. Yeah, but I'm pretty he, sure. This I... is why this man should be producing the show and not you, buddy. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, true. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right, mate. Uh, it's true, yeah, but but the thing is, what I'm gonna tell you is that I can hundred percent confirm that the bad blood is not between Nick and Gary Tang. The bad blood is between Nicholas Lee and Impact MMA. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Gary Tang's just gonna be the one to take care of it. That I'm not too sure about that. Um, I'm gonna go around and ask around. I think this is gonna be a fucking good fight. Ellen, uh, anything else line up for? Yes, be done for yep. I do. I'm just trying to find the effing email that I sent now. It's <laughs> here somewhere. Okay. Okay. So what else we got? Okay. So yeah, we just done that one. Okay. Now we have another one, which I is pretty much confirmed as well. So this is the whole thing. We're trying to get. I don't want to give you stuff that's gonna fall off. So we have uh, Mardinov Mekhrubon from Russia, fights out of gym box in Kuching. A 24-year-old, six-foot-tall Russian who's going to be fighting Liam, the Tasmanian devil, Nazi Rapport, uh, who's a British guy, fighting out of Monarchy MMA in Kuala Lumpur. So we've got a Brit against the Russian. We also have, and this will be a really good fight, I'm pretty sure, um, a, a, a last year's MEMA finalist, losing finalist, um, which is, uh, God, I've got to say his name now. I think it's Gio Jian Kong. Okay, that's what I think his name is. <laughs> okay. N G E O H Jian Kong. He was uh-huh. a losing finalist in Mima last year. Yep. And he will be fighting Susuvan Ghosh from Tiger Gym in India. Yeah, who who fought uh, in one FC? Susuvan, he did fight in one FC. Um, he was definitely outclassed in one FC, uh, but we ain't one FC. You know, we're, we're, we are a much smaller thing, and uh, he'll be fighting somebody much more his level. Also, this will be the first ever pin weight bout in Malaysian MMA. W- wow, what's pin weight? 51.3 kilos? Pin weight, I think it's about four ounces, isn't it? It's like a, it's like <laughs> a drop of sperm. <laughs> it ain't very heavy. Check it out, I don't know, look it up on the internet. Uh, I think I know shit like this. <laughs> Suman, what's pin weight? I, I have no idea. Like, as Alan said, it's probably... It, the way he refers to the fighters as a sperm, so uh, I think we'll <laughs> go off what Alan says, referring to his own fighters as sperm. So we'll go off that. They're not my fighters, brother. These these fighters are fighters of the world. All right. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I didn't say they were sperm. I said they weighed about the same as sperm. <laughs> but I've got I've got heavy sperm. Compar- comparing them to sperm is just as bad. Uh, can you them? Oh, I feel bad now. Okay, <laughs> a plate of curry. They're about as heavy as a plate of curry. Is that better? Yeah, that's, that's a bit better, but refer- or referring to fighters as food for you guys isn't as good either. So, uh, <laughs> no how you want to put it, I don't think we'd want any of the fighters would want to be compared to anything. Uh, you None know, of my favorite fighters. things are food. Yeah, okay. Is this sperm one of your favorite things too? <laughs> <laughs> Only my own, <laughs> I'm thinking of a lot of these things. Uh, no, uh, oh, pinway, uh, if we start talking about people's penises again this week. <laughs> <laughs> P- pinway, as, as far as I know, is I think. Uh, it should be 51.3. Yeah, 115, 51.3 kilos. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but okay, but what's straw weight then? Straw weight is 53 point something, 52.2. Oh, okay, yep, yep, yep. So it's not that much. So different. basically, so, Susavan is going to be fighting at his proper weight rather, rather than what he fought at at uh, 1FC. 
Someone once told me that uh, Gary Tang could fight at, uh, at Pinway as well. Oh, oh wow. Straw. Yeah, Straw. Gary is supposed to fight at Straw. Uh, well, how much does right. he walk around at? I'm, I'm think he, he walks around 60 plus. 68, oh, okay, yeah. I think. Yep. So he could cut a bit more than that. Gary's still a beefy guy. He looks like a beefy guy at the weight. Even at, uh, at uh, Flyway, he looks a bit beefy. Yeah, man, and I can guarantee you that uh, Gary Tang vs. Nick will Beefy be a... being a meat reference. <laughs> huh? You're referring to yeah. him as meat now. Yeah, oh, I'm allowed okay. to. I'm a fighter. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm a fighter's I, dad. Does that help? I, if, I, if I was, if I was a, a promoter or something a show, I wouldn't be saying that. As a fighter, <laughs> everyone to me is fresh meat. Okay. You know <laughs> Well, they just see me for what I am, a fat white bloke. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> now, also, and I can't confirm who we're fighting, um, but I believe we have Will Chope on, is going to be fighting. Um, and also, I believe we're going to have uh, Alexander Machado, Lecky, from... Uh, wow, Impact. Lecky is fighting as well. Yeah. And, and... Well, we're, we're hoping, we're, we're, um, we're, we're trying to organise. I mean, a lot of these things is because we've been messed about with dates, People have said they will, but you know how it is. People will drop out. And um, we also have um, Jun uh, Trestle Tan, who fought um, Brad Robinson last time, mate. Yep. So awesome. he will be fighting as well. So, but but we don't have any um, opponents as yet for these guys. How about Daniel Tabera? I heard that Daniel Tabera is going to main event uh, Ultimate Beatdown. Well, that might be true. Yeah. Um, I know that today, and I don't know who they are because I haven't been sent the details yet. But today we've organised, we've arranged a female fight. We've got an Evolve fighter taking on a Moy Fit fighter. I think at 48 kg. Um, Females. I think I know who the Moy Fit uh, girl is. I'm not too sure about the Evolve girl. Uh, Suman, do you know anything about Daniel Tabera from Phuket Top Team? Uh, I. Man, uh, to be honest, I don't know too much about him myself. I've never trained with him. I wasn't around Phuket at the time that he was there. But um, the one thing I have heard is he, he's pretty legit. You know, some of the guys have a, a big uh, a big uh, opinion on him. Uh, he fought in Bellator, right? Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, the guy, no one's had anything bad to say about him to now. But personally, I haven't trained with him, so I couldn't really say too much. All right, man. I'm hoping that uh, you guys got get some uh, some guys like like Daniel Tabera. I think he's like 15 and 8 for Ultimate Redown. It's gonna be huge, man. If you guys get someone like Daniel well, Tabera, you know, we're, we're, let's be honest, we are the small kids on the block. Um, we get what we can get. We're, we're trying to get an international field, um, which I think we're doing okay with. Uh, you know, realistically, this is a huge jump up for us. This is our first one that's not going to be. You know, in a bar or a mall. This is us in a in a gym. And as you said, you know, three years ago we were doing this in a gym for sixty people. Yep. So you know, and this is this is this hasn't grown with TV money. This hasn't grown with sponsorship. This has grown just purely because people come to watch the bouts. You've been to our events. It's we're all about people through the door. Nobody get none of us get paid. None of the organisers get paid a penny. Um, we try to put as much money as we can towards the fighters. I know that um, Reps Fitness. Are sponsoring 10,000 ringgit uh, prize money, which I think is going to be sort of distributed through at least 10 bouts, possibly. Um, uh, you know, I think it's going to be something like, and we're still arguing about this. I think it's 650 for the ring winners. Um, we're having the argument about whether the losers should actually get any bonus. I don't think they should. Yeah, man. Um, okay. Since I don't know, I don't know. I still don't feel excited. About ultimate be down. I I'm trying to make it oh, a bit. <laughs> I'm trying to make it a bit more excited. So, uh, exciting. So we got. I think the best fight of the card should be Nicholas Lee versus Gary Tang right now. Um, we got Suzuvan versus Nyo, who I feel uh some Malaysians will come down for that as well. Um, the Russian versus the Brit. I don't know. I I still can't get their names yet, but I'm hoping that well, will be a good Martin fight. Well, of Mekrubon. Mekrubon and, and he's a one and oh. Uh, he's a one and oh, and the other guy is uh, Liam Nazari Poor. Okay, Liam Nazari Poor. Uh, um, we're gonna have Will Cho Monarchy MMA. So I'm guessing you're gonna have like probably being uh, a kickboxing sort of gym boxing guy, Russian guy against a BJJ type guy from uh, Monarchy. 
Although that's... actually, he's next. He's a, he's a former ABA boxer, the British guy. So uh, he might have power in his punches. But they're both one and zero, so it's a fair fight. All right, that's that's, that's great. We got Will Choke, and um, I think I'm just gonna fucking break the news now. Uh, we're gonna have uh Hazwadi as well on Ultimate Beatdown. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna get my ass kicked on Ultimate Beatdown 14. Cool. Who are you gonna take? Do you know anybody? Um, I let. Do you think I, girl? I I. I <laughs> <laughs> Let's not turn Ultimate Beatdown into a live porn show, Mister Allen. Bro, Cole. if you're willing <laughs> to get in the cage, you've got you got big enough balls. Fair play to you. I I'm just gonna get my ass kicked inside. So. No, you're not. Hey, what's your weight? I'm at um I think I'm at fifty eight right now. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Yeah. Where's Alex? Now how are we doing? Oh fuck. Oh, 50, I don't know. You might have to fight a catch weight. Let's see if we can get you to fight Alex the Blur. All right, That'd man. Be awesome. I'm game. Yeah, well, that would be hilarious. <laughs> I, I believe in you, Adi. Uh, yeah, okay. I believe in him against Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if you're going to be fighting seriously, does does Melvin know? Uh, I think I Melvin actually knows this for a long time now. I think Suman actually knows this for a long time. Yeah, I've, I've known okay. for a while. Yeah. Okay, well, I didn't fucking know. And I'm, wow, I, cool. He's been flying on the well, weekends. You don't need a press pass then, do you? <laughs> huh? You won't need a press pass. <laughs> uh, I, I, you g you can give me a fighter pass. You'll get yeah, a fighter that's, pass. That's, that's cool pretty cool that. for you, Wadi, but you get on your first fight, you get to fight on the same card as uh, Will some Cho. Cool, Will Chope and some good uh, talent that's coming through in the Asian scene, guys like Nicholas Lee and uh, Gary Tang as well. So you got Daniel Tabera, hopefully maybe on the show as well. So. So, some new blood, some old blood, some good guys on the show. Good experience for you. Something you'll remember. Just take it with both hands. Yeah, in a stadium, dude. That's it. In a proper <laughs> stadium with proper fans. You guys have to bring a shitload of people from Singapore. Yeah, man. I, I will. I will hype up my fight. Not worry. <laughs> yeah, not the rest of it. You don't need to worry about the rest. Just yourself. That's all we worry about. <laughs> yeah, um, shameless no, plug. Man, Will Trapp's getting pretty oh. busy, eh? Yep. Yeah, um, well, you know, he's. I feel sorry for the guy in as much as what happened to him. You know, as you know, I'm friends with him. But, yep. you know, I like his attitude, which is like, F it, I'm just going to jump straight back in and, and take as many fights as I can again. Yeah. Now, he, he, he was like that even before he got to the UFC. He'll, he'll fight. Oh, God, yeah. That's good, yeah. yeah. The thing yeah. I love about him, it, it's like, it, even before, it wasn't about the money. He's never really done it for the money. He's just like... I'm going to fight. As long as they fly him somewhere, he'd take the fight. Yeah. He's uh, fought, I know, I I know like he's fought a lot of his fights for free, you know. Um, and my brother's even said to me, like, that uh, Will will fight anyone, whether it's MMA or whether it's Muay Thai or something, you know. Anyone, he'll do anything. Yeah, he's just game to fight. Yeah. I remember he was running up and down the road in, in Phuket once. And uh, when he was running, one of the guys from, I think it may have been a uh, Dragon... Dragon Muay Thai, they, they kind of uh, were looking for a fighter and they kind of egged him on to fight someone. He didn't even know who they were trying to egg him on to fight. And then he came back and he, he told my brother and uh, Boyd he was going to fight John Hod, who's like a, a legend in, in Muay Thai. And this is like two years ago and uh, Boyd, the owner of Phuket Top Team, was like, man, yeah. you're going to get your legs broken by John Hod. And he's like, yeah, but imagine if I win. You know, and, and he was That's so how he's pissed. always been. Yeah. That's it's how cool. he's always been. It's like, you know, okay, he didn't get to fight in Brazil, but I'm like thinking, and I love Will Chobe, he's a really good kid, but I'm like thinking, this is a fucking tough fight you have, you know, and he was like, ah, if I win. <laughs> and that that's yeah. an awesome attitude. Yeah, super it nice really guy. Is. So, yeah, and I, and I hope that we find a suitable opponent for him because, but, but the thing that concerns me is in this Rebel event as well, so I'm, I'm sure he doesn't want to take anything too stupid on. Yeah. He's got a tough yeah. fight at four and he's obviously got the, the tournament coming up. So. Yeah. Now, the other thing, Wadi, you wanted to talk about was this um, Jim Parasite, as yep. you, you called him. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you the story. Let All me right. tell you the story. All right, so, I mean, let's there's, go. There's a bit of background to this. 
Um, I've posted videos of this guy fighting. He lost against my son, and also I posted another one where he lost against an Indian guy uh, recently as well on one of the Ultimate Beast games. He's, like my son, trained under Melvin Yeo. Okay. Okay. Uh, but he's much more of a judo guy, which is why he's, he's nicknamed sort of Judo Mock. And um, he fought my son when my son was 16, and he was, I think, 23. My son did him on a standing rear naked choke in about a minute and a bit. N if you listen to the video next to you can hear people sort of screaming and shouting the people sat next to me were his new bosses his bosses at the gym he's at now and they are friends of mine and kim's who own, owns this gym and um but they're sort of they've got a bucket full of money and they're they're sort of the way they're doing things isn't going down very well in this area because we all try to sort of get along and all try to you know we're all aware we're in competition but we're also in, trying to grow sports and trying to grow fitness and what he's been doing is he's been going to Melbourne's gym taking classes and then not paying now my son I paid every month for four years my son to train with Melvin I know a lot of people took advantage of Melvin in the early days he's much more alert to that now but this guy just fronts up walks in does the class walks out without paying and he's been advertising his own his new gym that he's he works at and the classes they do after the event and contacting all the people wow now uh, you know fine you want to train with somebody else that's cool because we all got to learn from somebody but then to try and steal their their members <laughs> and not pay yeah that's dodgy man that's dodgy that's fucking dodgy. Okay. Uh, hey, dodgy. Um, I, I like to get... Funny, here's the funny part, though. This is the best bit. And we've put plenty of videos on. i put plenty of videos online this week because he's a dick. But he's... They've got a very nice MMA gym they've just opened. And they're only five minutes away from us. So your choice is you come and train with us where our two teachers are Melvin Yo, one FC fighter, and my son, Sebastian, who trains at Evolve. He's part of the Evolve amateur team. Uh, and who beat this kid in about 1.30 and he also I posted another one of him losing to the guy from India where he got basically battered and did the unthinkable turned his back on the fighter so that oh. fight was stopped as well um, and yet he's this is the problem we get, we're getting McDojos here we've got people like that who with very little experience and not very much skill working for big gyms tr claiming they teach MMA all right, I, all right. I think I think now is a great time to get Mike on. Uh, Mike, are you there? Mike. See, oh, I told well, you well, should have yes. done him first. Yeah, he's here. Oh. He's here. Okay, Mike. Um, <laughs> you you listen to the yeah. uh the discussion about uh some gym parasites. Um, in Philippines, do do you guys have McDojos as well? Like what gym parasites, man? Okay. Um. Uh, the thing is, uh, what's happening in uh, M Malaysia or in Singapore is, they will go into a legit gym. That some guys will go into a legit gym, train for two three months, then open their own gym and started training MMA. Train people, uh, teach people MMA. Is does that happen in Manila? Mm, I don't think so, man. You know. Uh, uh, I ca I can't be totally honest in Manila. They're, they're much too into their fighting. Malaysia, it's all new. Manila, it's like if they have MMA yeah. on TV all the time. And yeah, you got and you like, can oh, no, just search on YouTube, like man. Yeah, you can search. If, if yeah. you can't pay, yeah, if you can't pay for a uh, gym session, j then you can just pay ten pesos, watch YouTube for one hour, man. Oh, that's how how do you do it in in Manila? If you can't pay for gym sessions, you watch YouTube for an hour. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, for a gym session around 200 pesos, uh, some some guys, you know, uh, they just do it for, do it in YouTube or, or something, just like what I do, man. <laughs> I mean, other, I mean, other, other people uh, would, would, you know, go to the gym, but not that to do like parasite thing, man. Yeah, I understand. Uh, it's, like, it's like the lowest of the lowest, man, here in the Philippines. And everybody watches Manny Pacquiao here. So, yeah. in, one way or, in one way or another, they can pack a punch or two. <laughs> okay, I, I mean, I was, I mean, I mean, I was shocked to hear that, man. I, that's unfortunate. 
Wow, I think I think that's more shocking news for you, man. If you just uh, tune in to us uh, regularly, how about you, Suman? In uh, Australia, gym parasites, uh, people who don't want to pay for sessions, uh, people trying to steal other people from gyms. Does that happen in Australia as well? Oh man, uh, gym parasites are a big thing in Australia, man. Uh, we just recently, uh, I had a guy come into my gym. Never seen him before, but. He'd walked into our gym and um, and then uh, I could I looked at him and as soon as I saw him I seen he, he had these messed up cauliflower ears and worse we had one worse than mine and I uh, walked in and I was like oh hey how's it going and I spoke to him and and we have like a, a free trial at our gym but it's a, a, a three day trial you know so we don't kind of try and bring the guys in for one day say yep this is what it is leave. When some gyms would, and it might be smarter for some gyms, they just like sign the guys up, you know, kind of put a, put a bit of pressure on them and sign up. But, you know, we kind of want guys that want to be here to be here. So what happens is we give a three-day trial on the card that you get. You can stamp it when they when they do their day. So uh, the guy comes in, starts speaking, gets a three-day trial, and uh, I ask him what his training is like, and, uh, how much he's trained, and he said he'd, he'd wrestled for a long time and, He's looking to fight MMA and he's done boxing for about five, six years. I'm like, yeah, sweet, no worries. Didn't think too much of it, but I'm like, oh, what class did you want to kind of try out first? And then he said that he wanted to come do the wrestling. Now, guys know that we have a lot of good Iranian wrestlers around here. So um, he wanted to come and see how good they really were. So what happens is he comes in and then uh, comes and wrestles against our guys. He was a bit of a bigger guy. Uh, 90 kilos or something and most of our real good wrestlers are around maybe 75 kilos or something and um they were going toe to toe the guy was real good uh, but still like our, even our little guys had put it on him a bit you know um he kind of had to pick himself up off the floor at the end of it then uh he doesn't come the next day and but i get a friend request off this guy that uh the same night that he had left our gym and then the next day i see that he's training at another gym and I was like, okay, sweet, whatever, you know, maybe you should try that out. And then the next day, he's at that gym again. Then on Thursday, he comes back to try out his next class for his second day trial. And then I said to him, I'm like, oh, yeah, I've seen that you went to the other gym. And he's like, yeah, I'm just like kind of seeing how it all is and, and things like that. Came and trained with our wrestlers again, got whacked a bit again by our guys because our guys knew that he went to another gym. They kind of put it on him a bit more. And then I see the next day on Facebook, he's posted up that he's training at another gym. And then I was like, okay, this is getting a bit funny now. So I went back into his timeline on his Facebook to see where his training was. And he's just been going from gym to gym, getting free trials and, and getting wow, whatever training wow. he can. And then he's fighting next week uh, under some other guy. Like some, he's got some trainer of his own that isn't an MMA trainer or isn't a trainer at all because I know the guy. Um, but the guy's making a bit of money off his fight, so he's kind of told him, you know, I'll get him, the, I'll get you the fight, just get your training right. So he's just gone off, doesn't want to pay for training, done a few free trials at every gym. You know, some gyms give a week free trial, and some get, gyms give a, a day free trial. So he's just gone from gym to gym to gym to gym, uh, never paid for any of them. And um, he's still got his third day on our trial thing left. But if he comes back to our gym, I'm not going to take the third day. And I'm going to say, you can't train here unless you sign up. Because he clearly just doesn't want to sign up for or pay for training. But how long does he want to do this for? You know, like uh, Alan said before, does he want to start uh, just going and open up his own gym soon or something? Or what does he want to do? <laughs> yeah, uh, like just cool. gym hopping, man. Yeah. I don't like it, man. Like, um, there, there's there's a few gyms, there's a few gyms in a sh in Sydney that, um, you know, our gym spars with their guys, uh, like as affiliate gyms, you know, and we stay real close knit. But other than that, I don't like our guys going elsewhere or anything, other than with our our set crew of of gyms that we've got. But this guy has gone to to the gyms that I hate the most as well. So. <laughs> I I feel like I feel like he could snitch us or something like that, you know. All of our guys here at Australian Top Team, and I'm sure um, Alan, with any of the gyms that your son trains at, he he'd have like a bit of respect for the guys that 
he's training with and, and things like that and for his teachers. So um, I feel a bit disrespected that someone would come in and, and use us like that. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, I think one of the things that, like, you know, Sebastian's only 18, one of the things that the kids learn is to respect their coach, yeah. you know, and the gym that's supporting yeah. them because the reality is by hopping around, you don't gain anything. I mean, okay, you get to maybe train with other people, but not enough to make a difference to your skill set. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that's a big difference between uh, cross-training and gym hopping, man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> There's a big difference, you know, because I, I believe that if you've got, if you just keep gym hopping and you get a, a little bit of information from each person, some people would be like, yeah, that's good. You can get the best things from everyone. But if you've got too many things in your head, you're not going to fight focus. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's quite confusing, yeah. man. And All right, man. People saying a million different things. All right, man. Uh, I'll put this uh, discussion of Ultimate Beatdown and Gym Parasites uh, to a stop here. Alan, thank you so much uh, for coming on to the show. Thank you, honey boy. Take care. We look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, I look forward to seeing That's you it. soon. 14 June, And I apologize bro. to all fighters for referring to <laughs> either A firm or B dinner. No worries. <laughs> I, 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 won't, I, won't, I won't apologize for calling in on fresh meat. Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks a Take lot, care, Alan. Cheers, right, brother. Thanks, Bye-bye. Man. Okay. All right, moving from Malaysia to Manila. Mike Miguel, um, first and foremost, uh, Pan Asian. It was fucking big stuff. A lot of fighters have been posting on, on uh, Facebook about their wins and medals. And I just saw Evolve just said they won 27 medals on the Pan Asian Jiu Jitsu tournament. How was the turnout? Was it a great competition, Mike? I believe it's your first time watching a BJJ competition. Yeah, yeah. It, it was the first time, man. Uh, I think it was cool. Um, uh, how was the turnout? Was there a lot of people to the event? I think in the first day, uh, the gi competition, I think uh, the number of partip- participants was um, more than the Sunday one, because especially with uh, here, it's Mother's Day, you know, it's a holiday, uh-huh. you go to the mall to eat and not to compete in BJJ, but there's a lot of fighters who fought, man, and a lot of, a lot of kids. <laughs> All right, I'm going to post this question to Suman. Suman, if it's a Mother's Day or your girlfriend's birthday or whatever day, would you still fight? Would I still fight? Yeah. Man, yeah. I, it'll be a bit, I would say it like this. I'll trick my girlfriend into thinking I'm doing something for her. You know, I'll tell her that I'm going to win this fight for her. <laughs> or, or, some, I'm very calm, or like after I... After I win on Mother's Day, I'll turn around and say, listen, uh, mom, you know, I dedicate this win to you for the 21 years that you've really put into me or or something like that. But really, I would not miss out on a fight or or a chance to compete. I wouldn't even miss out on training for my mom or my girlfriend. Oh, oh, (laughs) (laughs) that's just me. I'm I'm a selfish selfish Oh, you're going to get into trouble, Suman. Uh, Mike, what, what, what are your thoughts? I think it depends, man. If you're a mama's boy, then don't fight. <laughs> That's right. just that, man. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a fighter, man. Uh, but, it, but, but that's my opinion. Yeah, considering you are the journalist for the number one uh, MMA website in the Philippines, I agree to that no, statement. No, I'm not just... I, 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 I'm not a journalist, man. <laughs> Please don't call me that. That's too big for, an, for a title. <laughs> Okay, you are from Dojo Difter. That cool. Yes, sir. All right. Um, yes, sir. Thank you for inviting me, man. Yeah, n- not a problem, man. Because we need to know a little bit about Manila. Um, uh, Asian Jiu Jitsu tournament. I believe uh, some one FC fighters were there. Um, AJ Pyro and Osman yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, and Osman. Uh, I think Andrew Leone went there. Uh-huh. I don't know. I don't know because I didn't went to the day one. I I met. Guy is from Borneo Tribe Squad, uh, Coach AJ and and some of their fighters. Timeval was there. Uh, kids, uh, those kids from Team Evolve are good, man. Um, I was like in gi or no gi. Um, the kids was uh fighting with gi, man. Okay. 
So they kind of sweep the competition. They kick ass. Really. Um, pretty pretty much pretty much. So so during during Sunday, man. Know about the Saturday ones because I was well, I wasn't able to attend. Okay. Uh, talking about the Sunday ones. Um, the the le- this level of uh BJJ compared to um the guys in Singapore like evolve and uh, the guys in Malaysia like Brunei tribal and your local guys in the Philippines um where do you think is the ranking right now for BJJ mm. for me for the men uh, and uh, i uh, uh, based on what i saw mm-hmm. i think number one is from Malaysia mm-hmm. uh, sir AJ coach AJ number two will be Someone from Evolve, I think. So um, how? And number three, Philippines. But Philippines, you know, uh, a lot. There's a lot to improve in the Philippines. There are a lot of good, good guys, uh, John Bailon and the other guys. But it's improving. It's improving, man. Thanks to you guys. That that's great, man. Because Philippines, uh, basically what we know about Philippines are strikers, and now since uh, Lucky yeah. got got a uh, Iranian res- wrestling coach now we see a yeah. lot of wrestling from Philippines so hopefully uh, the BJJ standard improves as well because competition just makes the standard improve in the Asian scene all right moving on from B- uh, Pan Asian BJJ um you went to the Bennett screen workout yeah yeah i was there um and i was asking i was asking stupid questions man okay what what did you ask Bennett screen uh i just asked, one of the things i asked Uh, what what do you think after his contract with Bellator uh, with one FC uh, what will be his legacy uh, for Asian fans or one FC fans and he was uh, like he wants to remain undefeated man <laughs> that's it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so man, yeah. Your, your thoughts on that <laughs> can, you, can, you, can you repeat what you had said <laughs> Um okay uh okay uh what Mike said was um he asked uh Ben Eskren uh what do you think his his legacy will be after his uh contract ends in 1 FC and Ben Eskren uh, answered saying uh I will be undefeated. Yeah. No 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 that, that, that I w- not that he wants to be undefeated. Uh, he, undefeated. He, he wants, wants He wants he if he if he if he would like to but you know it's a fight game sometimes you can you win sometimes you lose man yeah i, I uh, understand this part all right uh, i believe that if if he uh if he keeps getting spoon fed like he is then he will be undefeated <laughs> that's all i need to say on the, on the situation you know but like then then again like he's going to win the fight uh, he's going to win this fight against uh abasov or whatever his name is uh-huh and then Eventually he'll have to fight for the title and then maybe they'll say it's credible but honestly I don't think anyone in the world to wait division will give Ben Askren much of a a um a, a run I think ben, I think it's the the welterweight division in, in 1FC is a bit um a bit weak r- right now for him and um I I think that uh like I think that if you look at Uh, the one FC division. I think that if you look at, uh, for instance, the bantamweight division or something in in one FC, it's really strong division. Uh, I, I don't think the welterweight division is as strong as the bantamweight division is, you know. Um, and I think it's kind of like that. Uh, we got to remember, one FC, for instance, have only had six teams those now or something. Yep. So. For them to already be the second biggest organization in the world, or the biggest Asian organization in the world, is huge. It's it's great. So you can only imagine what happens by the time they hit show 30 or 40. Um, but I, I don't think right now or the next year or two, they're going to bring too many people in in that one FC division, welterweight division, to give Ben Askren's uh, wrestling enough of a headache. Put him into the UFC. Uh, division i don't think he'd even be top five um, <laughs> you know it's not for dana and bellator ben asker yeah. has definitely been in UFC, ufc man yeah <laughs> I'm, i'm i'm sure he, he would be in in the ufc but i think 
Um, it's not so much Bellator or Dana to even uh, blame. I think Ben Askren is his own worst enemy by uh, by his tactics in fights. Now he wins, and he's he's done a smart enough job to get to 50 and 50 with one FC and uh, and get these fights, which is great. Um, and he's a smart man. He's he's making his money. He's in his fighting. But um, if we want to talk about legacy, uh, I, I don't think just being uh, undefeated uh, brings a legacy. Uh, Floyd Mayweather is undefeated so far, 46 fights. But in that, he's beaten 26 legit world champions. Um, ben Askren, how many people can you look at in his record that have really been as high caliber as the guys that are in the... Uh, the UFC, you can never. I don't think you could put Ben Askren and GSP on the same page. You know what I mean? And GSP's had losses. I don't think in MMA your win loss thing matters so much. I think who you fight matters. And um, yeah, I, I think talking about a legacy for Ben Askren right now is a bit soon. Yeah, man, I, I, I totally understand that. Um, as, as I have uh, spoken quite a lot of times in the show. It doesn't matter if you are 1,000 and zero and the guys you beat are guys like <laughs> me who has zero skills, isn't it? Um, yeah, I, but Mike, your thoughts? Yeah, it, for me, it's just it just depends, man. Depend, depend, uh, depending on what will happen in on Ben Askren in one FC, depending on who one FC signs and whether or not Abasov. Abasov might uh, upset Askren. Who knows, right? Dude, if Abasov upsets Askren, the next day Dana White's Twitter gonna blow up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All I right. mean, I mean, I mean, even Ben Askren is uh, aware that Abasov can... is is aware that you know Abasov can can defeat him. Ben Askren's human. He knows that. That's why he said if he wants to, uh, he, he wants to leave a mark, but he, he's not telling that I want to be a undefeated world champion like, like that, uh, uh, un, you know, like the cocky, cocky type of announcement. But he, he just, if he, it, uh, if Lady Luck will be on his side, maybe, maybe he can be. I don't know. All right, my um, thanks for bringing us some coverage from the Man uh, Manila scene, and uh, I would love to thanks, have you thanks. have you again on the show. And uh, don't worry, man, this is a confidence boost. I believe you're a bit nervous since it's the first time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this is the first one. Yeah, hopefully, you, hopefully. You were, like, you were like telling me, would you like to be to guest on the show? But I was like, what? Are you sure? <laughs> Are you kidding me? That you know. Dude, you are from Dojo Drifter. You're gonna have to talk to a lot of fighters. You need the confidence, man. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think I need it. I need it very much, man. I was talking to Anna, Anna Hulaton. Yeah. That was my first interview, and I was like, uh, 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 uh. I was stuttering, <laughs> man. I was like, you know. Yeah, I understand, man. It's okay. It it takes practice. Slowly, soon. Since you are in the number one MMA uh, uh Filipino side. Bro, one day you'll be the number one journalist. You'll be the aerial hell one in your Philippines. No man, that's <laughs> big. Man. You're the you're the aerial uh, aerial one of Asia, man. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks, thanks for being on the show, man. See you again. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, I I won't stutter next time. All right, man. Thanks. All right, thanks, bye, thanks. Mike. <laughs> oh man, that guy is just uh, hilarious. Uh, all right. Um, we'll move all the way straight back to Singapore. First August Rebel FC Battle Royale. Suman, you saw the. Um. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, some people are gonna be pissed. <laughs> yeah, some people are not gonna be happy about the match. Man, I think that the matchups that are being given are fucking gonna really, really um, cause some upsets. Uh, I I I know we're gonna see upsets. I I I usually I uh, I don't like to pick. You know I don't like to pick favorites. 
Yep. I like to always be the one that picks the upsets, but man, I think there's going to be some upsets in this thing. Um, some tough first round fights. You saw what fights that I thought would have been uh, like if we if we took away the the uh, random selection of fighters. You saw which fighters I would have liked to see matched up first round. Um, but man, eh, we're going to see some good fights in in this first round. Uh, I think we're going to see some real legit fights. Uh, Miguel Torres versus Ashida, uh, which is going to be a great fight. Uh, we're going to see Will Chope against uh, Mauricio De Santos. Yep. Uh, and then we're going to see Pat versus uh, Pat Pomeranka versus Michael Tobin. Uh, two Aussies go against it. Man, I thought this shit was rigged when I saw that. Really? Yeah, man. Why? I don't know. <laughs> you you heard me before this whole thing turn around and say, man. Um, uh, uh, Michael will not be happy about, about if he got matched up with Pat first round. Uh, I, I've said that before and I've, I'll say it again. He right now is kicking himself in the butt. Right? Like, uh, in, in one stage, you could say to himself, ha, ah, I could maybe get it to the floor and, and get an easy payday and get to the next round. Or at the same time, you can say, man, I could get knocked out before that even happens. You know? Um, <laughs> I know for a fact that someone like Pat, because I know his trainer, I know Pat's trainer quite well. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, Pat's trainer, Dan Hyatt, is actually someone who's been petitioning for this fight in Australia for a long time, and the fight has never happened. Um, Pat, ha uh, Pat has something that, uh, that not many other people at the weight have. You know, he's got a legit knockout power. I said it before, I'll say it again, man. He's got some quick knockouts, and he's got some power in his hands. Um, and I think that that makes for a scary fight for anyone, you know. Um, and I think that it, this was kind of Michael Tobin is eight and zero. Um, he's ranked I think a hundred, uh, three hundred and two in the world. I think he's ranked three hundred and two now. Someone who's usually eight and zero would you, most likely be ranked higher. Now the ranking that I've seen he had that from is Fight Matrix. A fight matrix puts together your wins, your losses, uh, who you fought, where you fought, how long your fights have gone for. It's a mathematical thing to see where you stand in the world. Now, some people are in the ratings and some people aren't in the ratings. Now, uh, I think the ratings start at number 450. Yep. yep. Um, Michael Tobin is number, like I said, I think 302 or something in the world. Now, as someone who's 8-0, no, you would usually be ranked a lot higher. Now, the reason he's not ranked higher is because of his level of opponents. Um, say if Michael Tobin had fought Miguel Torres in this first round of the fight, his rankings would boost marginally, like you would just skyrocket. Um, or if you beat Will Chope, again, it would, it would skyrocket. Um, but... I think he thought that this was his chance to get onto the world stage, to fight a big name, maybe someone like Will Chope, Miguel Torres or someone, and um, and he ends up getting stuck with someone he could have fought in Australia. <laughs> now, uh, as far as the show goes, I'll tell you, Singapore, don't blink. You know, because anything can happen in this fight. Don't look at a record and say 8-0, 5-4. No, yeah, it's a clear-cut decision because Patty can win. Pat's a great fighter. Now, Michael, on the other hand, he's an amazing grappler. He's a black belt in judo and he's represented Australia in judo. He's a purple, a legit purple belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, you know, and, and he can he can sub a lot of guys. He's seven wins by submission, one lit, uh, one loss by decision. Um, I think it makes for a really interesting fight, and it's a fight that a lot of people in Australia would pay to see. Um, so if this is being streamed live, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going to be back home. They will pay the ten dollars for pay per view to watch this live. Um, Singapore, it will be a, a fight to watch. These guys aren't bigger names like Miguel Torres or something, but Pat puts on a show, and and Michael finishes fights as well. So um, I think that Pat, even with a five and four record. Is going to be Michael Tobin's hardest opponent to date, uh, and 
yeah, I, I think it makes for a, a good a good fight. Uh, Pat's weakness as well is, is submission. So let's see the striker versus the grappler. It makes for an interesting fight. It makes for a, a fight that the crowd could get involved in. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to be a great fight too. And then the last fight you got uh, uh, Radon. Yep. Is and passes, right? Yeah, Radon and Yujiro. Yeah, Radon and Yujiro. So um, Radon, as we know, uh, has fought Will Chope before, seven and four. Has a loss against Will Chope, and I think Yujiro is eleven and eight. Yep. Yep. If I'm not wrong. Yeah. Um, Yujiro is eleven and eight, and um, like he's he's a Japanese fighter, and I always just say it. You know, because I, I really believe in the, in the Japanese and the Korean fighters. You know, their their heart is something that can't be matched. So you can't look at an eleven and eight record and say that they're not um, a le- legitimate fighter. You know, uh, you, you looked at uh, Shafiq's last opponent, who was uh, how do you say his name? Jiu Hyun Po. <laughs> <Go. laughs> say it. I don't know how to fucking say it. Uh, Guang po- Guang Piang Ho. Yeah, yeah Guang right. Pong Ho. <laughs> okay, that, that's Man, close enough. His, rec- his, rec- his record was four, four and three. So people would be like, ah, oh, even wins one, loses one, wins one, loses one. You don't really know what to think about this. Hey, the Koreans and Japanese guys always come to fight, you know. Guang Pong Ho came to fight that day and, and scored an upset in, in some people's eyes, but I'm sure he didn't see himself as the, the underdog. So records in this tournament necessarily shouldn't be um to examine what you got to examine is out of the all the guys that they've got in this from miguel torres to will choke to to uh tobin to yujiro to ashida they're all finishers they are all legitimate finishers to de santos as well who, who's got an incredible guillotine on him man these guys are finishers so i think that we're not going to see any uh, any of these grinding wrestling matches from any of these guys. I think we're going to see submissions and KOs. And, and really, that's what the crowd wants to see. We're going to see some wars. We're going to see some battles. We're going to see some heartache. We're going to see some cries. I think um, uh, Rebel FC, the way they've put these eight guys together and the guys that they've brought together are uh, entertaining fighters. Uh, newcomers old guys they got the miguel torres they got the the guy who's looking for redemption they got will choke they got the young uh white kid tobin who's just a quiet shy guy who is eight no now and then they got pat Promranko who doesn't even watch fighting or or anything like that he just comes and fights and he's not about all that all that bullshit you know you see pat at the at the rebel fc uh uh press conference where they did the announcement he comes in wearing a suit and then he's got his gym shirt under it that's cool as fuck you know <laughs> you know uh rvt riot valley tudo you know so uh, he comes in re- representing you know he, he doesn't care about looking too flash he just he wants to be himself so um i think we've got eight really legitimate guys from eight different walks of life eight different records who can cause an upset and and singapore is going to be the one to to benefit from this, you know, uh, Rebel FC are doing something great for Singapore, and if, if these guys, some of them aren't names before, I'm sure that from from Tobin to Pat, man, like I'll tell you, everyone knows this. I'm the number one guy, or like there's so many other guys. I think Michael Tobin is probably the most ripped on person in uh, in Australia. You know, he gets ripped on because they say he avoids a lot of fights and things like that. But hey, if he goes through with this tournament, you're putting yourself in an eight-man tournament where you don't know who you're fighting. It's a, it's a risky job, so people got to kind of give him a clap. Australia should get behind him. Australia, um, like so, uh, Australia can't really get behind anyone in a fight uh, against two Australians together. But um, it would be great to see some Aussies get behind, maybe even Tobin, and and hopefully he puts on a, a good short uh, show and. Um, Shows that, man, he, he's a legitimate force to be reckoned with. Um, like I said, he's an amazing grappler. He's a world-class grappler. So um, we'll see what happens in this fight. Uh, Singapore are going to be entertained with these eight fighters that they've got together. Um, th- like I said, all different walks of life, and they're going to come in, and they're all going to put in put on a show. Uh, 
you got your UFC vets, you've got some some guys that you've never heard of. So let's see let's see if some upsets and and some history can be made uh, with this second Rebel event. History will be made. So yeah. Um, I feel that it's is a very uh, fresh way because there was a lot uh, in in the Asian scene, especially since the Pride days. There was a lot of um, uh, speculations about dodgy matchmakings and j- having an open draw in front of in front of the media, showing how random it is. It is just a fresh change. It's just a fresh start, and I I just love the idea, man. I think, like. I don't know, like, I really, really, really would have wanted to, because I didn't get to watch the, the press conference, right? I don't even know if there's any video on the press conference. But um, everyone knows that um, I got signed by Rebel FC, so uh, I'd really want to see, even with, with those pro guys, what's happening and what's going on, because I'm so interested. And I know a lot of people around me would have wanted to see that too. I really would have wanted to see a camera be put in front of every single one of those fighters, just as their fight got announced, just to see their facial expression. Yep. <laughs> I know someone like Tobin, who, who's a, he's a quiet guy, you know, hold, holds to himself, um, wouldn't have had much of an expression, but I couldn't imagine him being too happy about the fight of fighting Pat first round. Because I know that Pat and uh, Michael were both at Gracia. Yes. Training together and things like that. And the next thing they know, they're getting put to fight against each other. You know, so uh, it's kind of like, hey, man, let, let's us Aussies stick together in this tournament. <laughs> It's like Aussie on Aussie, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it, it could make sense. You know, I, I know a few people have said to me that uh, they don't, they thought as well that maybe that it wasn't a legit uh, draw. So that's why I don't really know how it was done. Uh, but someone else had said to me that from a reliable source that, um, that there was no way it could be rigged. So um, if that is the case with, with Rebel, man, like you said, you got to condemn them. <laughs> it's true, man. Okay, if it's Rick, if it's truly Rick, I would condemn them straight straight away. I'm I'm straight. Uh, no matter how how good friends I am with uh, Chad or or Justin, if they do something that would hurt the legitimacy of the sport, I will condemn them straight away. But uh, after I found out quite a lot about how the draw was being done. And even though I don't experience it firsthand, I still believe that that it's not rigged. Man, uh, were there many people at, at the press conference? Um, I'm not too sure, man. But I believe uh, most of the media was there because the next day it came out on our number one newspaper. Wow, that's great for uh, Rebel. Um, where where do you think Rebel is going? Uh, just your opinion, you know? Because I uh, I've asked you a few times, but where? After the things that are coming to light, the fighters that they've gotten and, and things like that, where do you see Rebel's show going? Um, it depends, man. Because, like, t- Miguel is going to fight in glory first. Yeah. And that could be a make or break for Rebel. Yeah. I, I really feel... You, you don't go to glory... Even though I know Miguel is going to fight a newcomer in kickboxing as well, but you don't go to glory expecting uh, to come out alive. <laughs> yeah, man, uh, it, it look, Pat Barry versus a newcomer. Yep. Do you know the a guy that no one had heard of, and Pat Barry got iced. Yeah, you know that's the thing. It is going to be make or break. Because the thing is, um, uh, if Torres wins glory, comes he's still got it. Yep. You know what I mean? The people are going to say he's still got it. Yeah, he's still got it. And he, he fights in Rebel. And. That is the best thing that happens because whether Torres wins or Torres lose in the first round, that somebody is gonna be legit. If yeah. ta- if Ashida wins Torres, who's like the featherweight uh, uh, tournament winner of Glory, then Ashida is gonna be the shit, isn't it? Yeah, man, that, that's what I mean. But like, what happens if if Miguel Torres if he beats Miguel Torres in the first round, gets put against someone else in the next round? And lose. Uh, and loses. <laughs> it's like, man, what the fuck is going on? But that's the beauty of it. Yeah, and that's... That, that's... that's the beauty of the sport. Anything can happen. And that's why Rebel has given these guys a chance. Because they believe that all these guys with the finish rates that they've got... I think it's an over 80% finish rate with these eight, eight guys. Um, you know, uh, I think that with these guys that they've gotten, anything can happen. So... Uh, 
it makes for excitement and upsets. So let's see what happens. I'm sure everyone right now predicts that Miguel Torres is going to walk in and take it out. But let's remember, Miguel Torres is coming up from 62 kilos to 66. Um, and as much as you don't think it does, it makes a big difference. Yeah, man. I, yeah. I'm going to um, hold my predictions for for who's going to win the whole tournament. I just want to see what happens in the first round. And from the first round, shoot, there, that is the the ultimate uh, way to pick who is going to win after the first round fight. Then we will we will see we will see who's the hungry ones in have our you seen, man. Have you, have you seen any videos on Pat and Michael? Uh no. You haven't seen any videos no. on them. Okay, talking about Pat and Michael, um, talk since they are like considered uh one of the top guys in Australia. Was there at any point of time a promotion in Australia tried to make this fight happen? Yeah, a few. Uh, f- a few. Listen, mm-hmm. I, uh, yeah, uh, from what I've heard, um, it, it's happened. Uh, they've tried it a few times, and this is just what I've heard from uh, from other people. And um, from what I've heard is they've tried to make this fight happen before. And um, Michael's team, I won't say Michael. Michael's team wasn't interested in the fight. Um, he, they said that he wasn't interested in the fight, and. Um, before all this happened, I actually spoke to Dan Hyatt. Dan Hyatt, who is um, Pat's trainer at Riot Valley Tudor. Um, I spoke to Dan Hyatt, and he had said that, um, man, it would be a dream for him to get uh, Pat and Michael in the first round of this tournament. There's nothing he wanted to see more, you know. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a fight that Australians have, have wanted to see. Uh, as far as Pat being considered one of the top Australian guys, uh, I, I don't know if he would be considered one of the top Australian guys, but in saying that, I think that Pat could beat any top guy. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's, I wouldn't consider him the best, but I would consider him a fight that no one wants to take. You know what I mean? Yep, I understand. Uh, uh, if if we don't remember, uh, like, I, I don't know if you've looked at his record or anything. In one of his uh, his last fight, he lost to Regan uh, Neo. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he lost by submission. But his fight before that, he fought a guy who just come off the Ultimate Fighter, Grant Blackler, who was on the Ultimate Fighter Australia um, UK. He was eight and zero. Now he was undefeated at eight and zero. Most wins coming by decision or uh, submission who was a grappler as well and um, Pat knocked him out cold <laughs> so I think the whole 8 and no thing fighting a grappler could kind of uh, Pat has been put in that position Pat has versed big names and come away with some upsets um, uh, like I said before I think he's one of the hardest hitting guys in that division and, uh, and he's going to give whoever he fights a headache so uh, he's, uh, I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Pat. I actually spoke of. I've never met him in, in person, but I've watched his fighting style, man. If he hits you with that right hand, you're in trouble. Yeah, man. It, it just, um, it just stresses the fact of uh, my belief in MMA math doesn't work. It, it's stupid to believe in MMA math. It's, you don't look at the records. You don't. Uh, well, what, what do you, what do you, th- what do you consider MMA math? Okay, MMA math, number one thing in MMA math is always about uh, 11 and 0 and 8 and 0 and 7 and 0. Like, I don't give a shit if it's 7 and 0 and you, you fight. But see, that, that's not the real math. That isn't the real math. Go look at, uh, have you ever been on Fight Matrix before? If fight Matrix, yep. Yeah, they calculate stats and so on and so forth, yep. Man, I think that is the, the best thing to look at. Because it doesn't just consider... Who you have? Uh, it doesn't just consider your record being eight and zero, or ten and zero, or fifteen and zero. It takes into consideration who you fought, how many rounds you've done. It takes every who they, who your opponents have beaten, who your opponents have lost to. There, there's a scoring scale for it and everything. Man, I'm just someone who's just recently been getting put on. Like uh, Ian's the one who actually brought it to light to me. Fight Matrix, you know. Uh, since he's been there, he's been he's been showing me a lot of things and, and things like that, and and he's taught me a lot of things 
in fighting in fighting in the gym and outside you know um and reading that and how i mentioned before um uh how i mentioned before he uh michael tobin's ranked number 302 now what i looked at was i started looking at my own fighters um now i looked at sam k sam k for instance is number th- uh, his record uh, on Sheer Dog is three and two. Mm-hmm. Now Sam K is ranked 168 in the world. Wow! Because he beat Chris Lockdiff. He beat Chris Lockdiff, which gave him huge points. In and he, he went to a second. It even takes into consideration the minutes that you took to knock him out. So maybe a five-second knockout doesn't count for as much point as a third-round knockout. Wow! Because you know I mean? of because of the experience you've gotten in the ring. That's how in detail this system is. Um, and so what, what it's done is it's gone to um, the records. It's seen that he's fought in every one of his fights the legit guys, you know. Um, and in his last two fights, he's gotten guys with over 10 wins in most of his last two fights. And in his last fight, he went to a decision. So more points get added. Now... You look at uh, the guy who's next in line from him in Australia, in the Oceania rankings, who is Joe Muir. Joe Muir is 10 and 4 as a professional, but he's ranked 149. So he's 10 spots away from Sam K, who's 3 and 2. And that shows the difference in the level of guys that they've fought. You know what I mean? Yep. So yep. Um, it, it's a great thing to look at and something, man, I've been addicted to since I, I found out about it. I'm looking at everyone's rankings. And um, and yes, it's it's real cool. It's got guys around the world that you would never, never expect to see. So it doesn't. You could have a, a losing record, and still be ranked higher than someone who's five and zero. Oh. You know what I mean? And and that's real MMA math. Yeah, that's real. See that it's not it's not the MMA math that that some people would think. Oh yeah, this guy is fucking seven and zero, oh, uh, eight and zero. Oh, this guy's five and four. Let's make this guy a four to one underdog. It's not like that. Yep, yep. That's, that's great, man. That's great. So, guys, um, those who really want to know what MMMF is all about, fightmetric.com. They will tell you the formulas, uh, how to uh, analyze fighters and how to really properly rank fighters, not just based on their records. And, and, it, even, and it even says if in your last fight or your next fight or whatever it is, you're fighting a fighter that's not world ranked and world ranked is within the top 450 Mm -hmm. so what do you think would happen if if you're number 200 you're looking to boost your world ranking and you're fighting a guy who's not even in top 450 you won't get as many points as you will if you beat the guy who's ranked 150 yeah man that's true so So, yeah so uh i think it, it benefits you a lot um looking at something like that because uh, I've heard some things that like uh, big companies now like uh, 1FC for instance, 1FC, Bellator and the UFC even are looking at things like Fight Matrix uh, as far as the guys that they're, they're looking at, the prospects and the things they want to sign. So if, I'm sure the UFC aren't going to sign someone who's not world ranked <laughs> in the top 450, you know? Or the, even the top 100, you know? Uh, I think you need to crack that top 100 if you want to even be considered for the UFC. So, um, guys that are looking to protect their record too much, maybe you're getting uh, uh, unraveled soon, you know? Yeah, that's good, man. I just hope that uh, this this uh, kind of service is uh, getting more popular with the MMA fans so if, that in the end... If you look, if you look at um, the Oceania rankings right mm-hmm. which is australia new zealand in australia rob lacita is number one at featherweight right uh, i think rob lacita is number like 51 in the world yep um he's number 51 in the world number two in australia is michael tobin right but he's ranked number 302 in the world there is that much of a gap between rob lacita <laughs> and and any other fighter that is trying to get into that featherweight division you know so who in the featherweights in australia want to step up and uh oceano or australia want to step up and and one day be in the ufc or be in one fc or things like that 
Well, I know one one featherweight in Australia who will want to step up. Who's that? Suman Mukhtari. Yeah, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but like, see that that's the thing. Um, I, I'm not a professional yet, you know. And and as much as people will say, oh yeah, um, um, you know, he's not a professional. Who is he? Blah blah blah. Like I said, come train with me and you'll see. And then come fight me and you'll see something else, you know. Um, when I turn professional. I'm looking from 450 to up, and I'm gonna work my way up, and one day I'll be right at the top. All right, man. No, the thing, the thing I just want to point out is that I hope that Fight Metric uh, get more popularity in the MMA scene, so that um, matchmakers have no choice but to put on uh, good fights rather than exactly, than, yeah. exactly. That is you know, the most important part. Uh, you know what I'm gonna look at after this? What? After, because I haven't done it and I just thought of it. Mm-hmm. Let's go look at what Ben Askren is ranked in the world, and then let's go look at what his opponent is ranked in the world. Oh man! Yeah, <laughs> the toughest test of his life. <laughs> uh, you 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 just give me a great idea down there, but uh, let's. Hold... Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure Ben Askren is ranked in the top twenty, right? He should. He, yeah, well, he should. Let's see what Bakhtia Abasov is. You know, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think he's in uh, somewhere there. Uh, yeah. Ben yeah. Askren is not even in the top fifteen level in fight matrix. Top, top what? He's not even in top fifteen of. If top fifteen? No, he's not. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, what what what's he ranked? Have, have you seen it yet? No, I I'm I'm still trying to get uh some. Some problems are navigating with the site, but number fifteen is Ryan Lafleur. Number one is Johnny Hendricks. Okay, so you have Ryan Lafleur, who's right ra- now. Okay, now you got to remember what organization you fight in has a big uh, impact on it as well. So fighting in the UFC is obviously gets you more points than fighting in the U- in Bellator. But at the same time, if you fought in, in Bellator against some, if you fought in Bellator against someone like Hector Lombard and beat Hector Lombard, your rankings would boost incredibly because of the wins and the people that he, he adverse and things like that. So, um, so there's, I don't think there's much of an excuse for Ben Askren not to be in that top 15 guys. <laughs> uh, I'm still having problem navigating with the side, but anyways, I'll look at it then maybe we can do something about that. And talking about UFC, we have UFC 173, but it's in May 24th, and that is like the next event. Um, we spoke about um, uh, Barrow and Dillashaw, so maybe we, we'll speak about Hendo Komier now. Um, okay, talking about Hendo Komier, I was pissed that they put Rumble with Lil Nog. Yeah, man, I, I think that's like a step back. It what is. is no, so... um. I don't. I. Th- I think that's a huge step back. Uh, uh, I don't know. Like I'm. I'm pretty disappointed about seeing that fight myself. Um. So yeah. Wait. Hold on. You wait. I was going back on something right now. You just said that he's not in the top fifteen, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, ben Askren. Yep. I just seen on Fight Matrix he's ranked number eight. Oh, I think I went to the wrong rankings then. So you you have the proper rankings now. Yeah, 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 but like my phone just turned off as I was looking at that. <laughs> uh, turn back on in a second. But yeah, anyway, going back on to um, uh, Hendo and Cormier, and then we were talking about Johnson and Little Nog. Man, what the fuck is up with that? Like, who would you want to have seen it to see uh, Rumble versus next? I don't care. Just put him in any of the top five. I don't even care if they make Rumble versus Rashad. Like, just give him one top. Four, the top four, top three contenders because he's like the number four, number five, like heavyweight right now. So I don't know, man. Unless the the only way I feel that uh, Rumble ha- can fight someone lower in his rankings is someone who is a prospect that could uh, shake the light heavyweight division. But come on, let's be honest. Lil Nog cannot shake the light heavyweight division right now. Little Nog is gonna get put to sleep. That's the that's the thing, man. Like if if UFC is like putting it this way, like you know, give Johnson another guy to just beat up, and so that you know they make him like a legi- legitimate contender. You don't even need. You can just 
straight away put him up there. It's just that you still have um, Alex, who should be the the first one, then followed by probably Hendo if he beats Komir. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Like, I, I, I when's the fight with Lil Nog and uh, Rumble? I'm not. I'm not too sure, man. Um, I can probably find it out. But the the. Man, I, I think honestly they should have just waited off. They should have let uh, Hendo and Cormier fight each other, and then the winner of that fight's Rumble, and the winner of that fight can get a title shot. Because I'm, I think that like we said, G- Gustafsson is next. Yep. Um. Yeah. So then, who's after that? You know, Rashad's on the shelf for a while. It would be Cormier or Hendo, as they they would say, but. At the same time, I think there's a big gap between someone like... Uh, I think there's a big gap between Gustafsson and Henderson. You know? Uh, I think that it's a huge gap between the, those guys. I don't, I don't think... I think that if uh, Gustafsson versus Henderson, he'd, he'd beat him up. Yeah, but the thing is, um, when, when all the uh, post-fight... Uh, I mean, the wines after that announcement and I was one of them. Anthony Johnson posted on Facebook and says this. Why is everybody caught up on rankings? A fight is a fight, period. Rankings mean nothing. It's either you are the champ or you are nothing. If you are the champ, everybody is on the same level. Remember that. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I can kind of understand what, what, he, what he's saying. It's, it's either one or nothing. You know, but at the same time, uh, yeah. He's just trying to. He's just trying to defend his boss. I think. Man. That's um, that's true, man. And you know what? It's he's not complaining, and he. Uh, I don't think Anthony Johnson is in a, in a spot to complain about anything. I think if I was in his situation, I wouldn't complain either. And if I got fed someone like uh, Nogueira, mm-hmm. um, then I would take the spot as well, and I'd just be like, yeah, I'll fight. I'll hopefully get a knockout bonus and get an extra 50k out of it. But I think what the UFC are trying to do are kind of give him more, a bit more credibility and a bit more time to take the the title, uh, to fight for the title. Oh come on, he um, just destroyed Phil Davis, man. Yeah, Phil Davis. You know, Dana White doesn't like Phil Davis. <laughs> We all know that, and and I think that he doesn't, he, and he knows that uh, Phil Davis isn't up to John Jones or uh, what's his uh, to Gustafsson's level, or even though he beat Gustafsson, I think they're they're two completely different fighters than what they were the last time they fought. You know, so yep. um, I, I think that even though the win did a, did a favor for. Uncle Dana, I think that Dana White still isn't the biggest Anthony Rumble Johnson fan because he missed weight so many times. I think he's got to kind of pay his dues back to the UFC, headline a few events maybe, or put on a bit more of a show and earn his way back. I think they just kind of make you know, the road firm like that. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of understand that as well. Um, no matter what, Joe Silva should be smarter than us. Yeah, Joe, Joe Silva, Sean Shelby, I'm sure they've got something yep. up their sleeves always, you know. Uh, it, it's like a lot of fights we've said that they're going to be this, they're going to be that. The UFC know what they're doing. Yeah, um, um, well, that's the light, heavy, light heavyweight division for you. But give you a situation, bro. If you, if Rebel set you up with an opponent that clearly has like zero and one record or something basically the matchup says that you are pretty much gonna beat this guy up will you just go there and take a payday man i i'd, I'd say like this all right mm-hmm. you you fight who's put in front of you um i i think that we i think it's silly that people with the ufc and things like that could uh could really want to pick and choose their their opponents um, you know, so I think, yeah, uh, if, if the rebel said that this is what you got to do, I would do it. Um, I wouldn't think of it so much as a payday, but I think that this is what I, I'd have to do. If I was a, an established person and a champion or, or something like that, I would very much so express 
how I don't think it's a smart idea for this fight to happen and I would state my reasons for it to happen. But if that's my only chance to fight, I'll take it. Now, uh, I think that there's a difference between that and people who, who like, the, the only chance to fight and people that have the option of fighting other fights but they just don't take those options you know what i mean like it's, it's hard to explain but like i said man i'll fight whoever's put in front of me all right man that's great man i think that's enough discussions for uh the show what do you have next week uh this week uh sam k is fighting wow with yeah sam k is fighting a brace uh brace i think 26 in canberra he's fighting uh mike the turninator turner uh-huh. Yeah, uh, man, if, if you were onto this, there has been so much shit talk on, on Twitter and Facebook and, really? and things really? like that. Yeah, well, this is what happened, right? And I'll, I'll give you a bit of a, the backdrop on this story. Yeah. So the backdrop on this story is, um, uh, what's his name? Who's that guy? Uh, oh, yeah, Mike Turner. Uh-huh. Mike Turner has come in and uh, it's obviously a random, uh, random check. Uh, for oh, it's a it's a random tournament. Now, it's not a random tournament as in what Rebel did, where they kind of picked it out on a spot. We kind of weren't told anything, and they said that the f- matchups were picked at random. <laughs> so, All right. Um, uh, what happened was the fighters got put into the tournament. Now, the the fighters got named. So Sam K got named, and and a few other guys got named. Uh, in the light heavyweight tournament of who's considered the best light heavyweight guys in Australia and then um, when all the names got put out there was one guy who, who wrote and he goes man um, he goes I was meant to fight Sam K a year and a half ago and then uh, in like bracket in like inverted comments put then he got injured and then uh, I had to settle for si- fighting someone else so kind of saying that Sam, he doesn't think that Sam was injured when when they were meant to fight. When this guy is, is I think I think his record's like uh, three and three or something, you know, like. But he's a heavyweight. Uh huh. Um, and he just started talking a bit of crap, and then uh, what happens is like after a bit of the talk back and forth between some guys from Sam's camp and some guys from Mike Turner's camp. Just so you happen, Sam and uh, Mike get put together in the first round. <laughs> uh, yeah. As soon as uh, a photo gets put up of it, you just see like people uh, ripping on Sam, saying how he's going to lose and, and things like that. And um, and all this shit, like, I don't know, like all this trash talking. And it's really, really going to be heartbreaking for Mike Turner on the weekend. Um he, I, I think Sam's looking better now than he has ever before. He's, like I said, he's a 21-year-old guy that just keeps improving and keeps improving leaps and bounds. You know, he's versing uh, Mike Turner, who's a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. Uh-huh. Um, and, and he's known that if he hits the floor, you know, he, he finishes the fight. But uh, I don't think it'll be like that. Uh, I think Sam's... Uh, Got a few tricks up his own sleeve, and and Sam can finish the fight wherever he wants. So um, it's going to be an explosive fight at Brace. So we have uh, Sam K on Brace fighting, and uh, in the first round of that tournament, and we'll see what happens from there. But yeah, it'll make for an interesting uh, after party. You know, we'll see what <laughs> everyone has, we'll see what everyone from Mike Turner's camp has to say. After and we'll see if anyone from our camp is still talking after the fight too. There's been so much back and forth talk. We'll uh, I'm pretty confident we're going to get the last laugh here, and um, I think Mike Turner's crowd is going to be a bit silenced. All right, man. That's right, awesome, man. man. That's awesome, um, man. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, man, for being on the show. I understand that you are sick. Yeah, man. I, I haven't left my bed or anything in the last two days, and uh, I, I actually haven't even been into the gym. I don't remember the last time I haven't gone to the gym, um, and today, like I, when I woke up, I was I was too sick, and then in the afternoon, I still told my brother, man, I'm too sick to come to the gym, and then I was on the toilet for how long, and then um, I took a shower, and I'm like, oh fuck it, I'm not missing out on Monday night, man. I have too much fun. 
Uh, oh man, I totally appreciate me uh, coming on the show despite being sick. Uh, you are the best, man. Um, uh, coming up for the fight scene this week is uh, fighting words Casey Schwier versus uh, Stephen Langdown for the One FC fight. And tomorrow I'll be spending my whole day with uh, Major Overall, and we will do a new segment called uh, "This Is My Life," where we show the human side of fighters. And I think it's high time that we do that. Um, I think one day, Suman, you have to do it as well. We we want to know what's happening in your daily life, uh, what you do when you wake up, what you eat, your favorite food, and so on. I think uh, fighters are being put up too much as a machine killing other people in the cage, and it's time to so to show their human side, like what UFC have done in their countdowns, and it's good. It's good stuff. Yeah, man, I'd love to do something like that. Yeah, man. Awesome, man. Um, that's all for tonight. Uh, we try to keep it at two hours tonight because there's too many complaints of a long show. See you guys next week. Thanks, man. See ya. All right. See ya.